All right, let's play some D&D, &D, fellas. Yes. Um, yeah. So last session, as just a quick recap, you had um, you had buried your fallen companion, Ferendir, in the Salt Marsh Cemetery. You'd paid for some RIP. basic funeral services. Um, you had taken a few items off of him that you thought would be helpful in the next phase of your quest. Uh, you head back into town and let's see, I think it was the next day then, because that was pretty late that night. The next mm -hmm. day you, um, I think you went to the, wait, let me think about this for a second. You came back into think, town. I feel like that morning, the first thing I went back to the, um, yeah. You went to the mayor or to the uh, the council chambers, right? And that's where you, uh, uh, Runar, were questioned by Eliander Fireborn about your whereabouts and sort of he was sort of crossing his T's and dotting his eyes on his investigation, of trying to rule you out as a potential suspect in Aubrey Dralian's death. That's where we started, and then that's where the group was then introduced to uh, a new arrival in town, Byron Hearn, who uh, appears to be very interested in figuring out what happened to Aubrey Dralian and why he was murdered. Along with Fire, uh, Eliander Fireborn, you went to the Dralian estate where you were met by Sophia Dralian, Aubrey's sister, who has traveled to Saltmarsh from Gradzul to essentially take over her brother's estate and continue his business, business dealings in the region, essentially hoping for a, a seamless transition uh, as she kind of takes the reins. And actually, um, she had traveled on a ship from um, Gradzul with Byron Hearn. So Byron is, is somewhat familiar with her, although she, uh, she was dressed very differently and um, came off a little bit differently than uh, the familiarity that they may have had uh, at some level, maybe, on the way down from Kradzul. Um, there was a request by Byron to essentially investigate the, the estate and um, basically look for clues. She uh, said that that wasn't possible because she had an important meeting and she quickly ushered you out of the estate um, and there was a, there's some frustration in that uh, coming from a couple of you. Um, you had made plans to come back the next day and hoping to uh, initiate a more thorough investigation, uh, but she certainly didn't feel as if she was too interested uh, in having you there while she had her meeting that night or that evening. Um, or no, that was during the day, sorry. Timelines. Woo. Um, then you went back into town I believe, um, Erin, you checked in with the uh, you checked in with the, the Dwarven Forge, the owner of the Dwarven Forge, and kind of chatted with her a little bit, set up some potential employment later for for sort of some downtime action. You then all rendezvoused at the Snapping Line, where uh, Byron did some uh, carousing with the locals, trying to glean some information about Aubrey Dralian and his standing in town and sort of what people's perceptions were of him, his reputation, if you will. Um, I can't remember if there was something in between there, but eventually you ended up at the empty net where uh, you, you had a couple more mugs of ale. Uh, Byron had noticed a the shadiest figure in the in the bar, a hooded, cloaked figure whose face you couldn't quite make out. You attempted to signal that individual, and then you went outside, uh, hoping that perhaps that individual would follow you out and you'd be able to to maybe communicate. That did not happen. When you came back in, that individual had had left. In the meantime, uh, Theo had inquired with the barkeep about getting in a fight. And the barkeep uh, suggested that perhaps you should try your luck at the, the pit fight out on the Point of Rocks at midnight. And you guys all thought that was a pretty good idea. 
Um, throwing your, your DM for a loop-de-doop. Um, so, I don't think I forgot anything. No, I, I feel like they're, they're, the day is sort of, there's some, maybe something else in there. But anyhow, um, at this point, we'll say that it's nearing midnight and um, you've just stepped outside of the empty net feeling perhaps a little bit of liquid, liquid courage uh, for those of you that have been sipping uh, or, or more than sipping. Um, and you are headed, I guess that would be south. That's my secret. I'm always sipping. Always sipping. <laughs> You're going to head south out the door from the empty net and make your way uh, not too far. I would say probably a quarter mile to the point of rocks. And as you're making your way down there, you step out into the cool night air. And if you recall, uh, there, were, there were some storms to the south that were headed towards Salt Marsh, circling above Salt Marsh, a little bit of mist, a lot of wind. So as you step out of the door into the, the night air, uh, you're met with some pretty strong wind coming off the ocean, or off the Azure Sea, I should say. And um, the wind is blowing. There's, a, there's sort of a dampness in the air from the mist of the waves crashing against the point of rocks, which, which is essentially, as you start to walk down the, the roadway, you can see that on, uh, to the east, as you look back towards the rest of Salt Marsh, it just kind of drops off. There's just these giant cliffs, but the waves are just railing against these cliffs uh, in this area. Let's see. Yeah, right in here. And along this whole coastline, the waves are coming from the Azure Sea and slamming and just causing this mist to kind of spread up into the air. And you're walking along and there are a, a variety of other, some very drunk uh, patrons of the empty net making their way towards the point of rocks. Others, it's hard to tell, but it's, there's, a, there's a pretty sizable crowd that's making their way down to the point of rocks this time. Cool. All right. Well, I guess. Guys, let's let's do I, this. I guess we're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> you all talk too much about this sort of thing. Just go do it. <laughs> well, I was kind of wondering, what what do you think we can achieve by going to this fight? I wanted to get in a fight. <laughs> now, you all had mentioned, and I thought it was a very good idea, that maybe by seeing the shifty people in town, we might be able to then talk to the shifty people in town, and perhaps if something happened that would have led to, I don't know, perhaps a rich man being killed, you might be able to pick the rumor up. That's true. I am here to pick a fight. And there is no faster way to build rapport than with underground shady people than fighting in an underground shady group of people. See? I know you knew what you're up to. Yeah, there's, there's got to be rumors or stories going around, around about Dralian. Maybe we can find more information here. Well, yeah, let's go. If not, we can always just punch it out of them. <laughs> there is that too. That is always an option. I brought you here. <laughs> You're in Cool Fighter. Cool Fighter. There's a lot of fighters in this in this party. Cool Fighter. Cool Fighter. <laughs> There's a reason Theo asked for the appropriate acts. Yeah, sounds like you've got a you've got a, some hype going on. Are you guys kind of spreading spreading some rumors through the crowd as you're walking towards no, the point of rock? Absolutely, <laughs> we're talking about Aaron Goldbiter. God damn it! Well, a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the patrons of the Empty Net are are already familiar with Aaron Goldbiter from what he did to Craig, uh, just yeah. about a week prior, where he sort of mopped up the the bar with his. I think he was an, wasn't he an orc, half orc? Half orc. Yeah, the half orc Craig, who is the, the bouncer of this place. Why did um, you do that? Or Why? Crack. His name was Crack. 
Why or how? First one, then the other. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, <laughs> we have, uh, our, have you met Ted? <laughs> Fair, Fair and Deer, RIP, got into a bit of a uh, tough spot. Oh, say no more. I understand. And we had to kind of swoop in and save him. And in the process, the bouncer. Uh, how did that start? It turned into an actual like fight that people were betting on I between think, the I bouncer I... and ear and coal biter. Yeah. In order then... to placate the establishment due to lack of money, yeah, we had to fight. And they had to t they, so they could take bets. And then we got seriously overcharged for some beer. Yeah, fourteen gold <laughs> for twenty some beers. It was like six, yeah, six gold <laughs> for. A... No, no, because no, I had like I had six gold. Dr I think I had yeah. nine gold, and he was charging like eleven. Yeah, yeah. It was, I think it was twelve gold. But you but did, and you were buying around for the entire bar. Surly, surly prices for yeah. What is like for, for, for primo? Well, they saw the well, tourists come in and the prices went up yeah. at that point. Right. Then we went to the wicker goat and the beer was like four coppers. <laughs> the, the claw wine. The claw wine. Yeah. We never talk about the claw wine. Claw. All right. I guess we make our way over to the point of rocks then. Sure. So as you make your way out along this road, again, people are kind of staggering. There's a lot of uh, a lot of talk, a lot of people talking about a couple of a couple of different fighters. Um, you know, you hear the you hear the name um, Docs. Um, Docs. People are talking about somebody named Docs, and. Uh, and you, you, you might even overhear someone talking about Erin Colviter. And people are pretty jazzed. So as you make your way out, the wind starts to pick up even more. But as you come over a little rise and start to descend to this opening past the roadway, you can see that there is a ring of uh, torches that illuminate this uh, area, this area that's been designated as the, uh, the fighting pit. And you can see that the, the flames from these five torches are, are just struggling to survive with the wind. And uh, ev all the, f the flames are, are, the fire is like drawn out and flickering really rapidly, drawn out as it, as it kind of tries to escape from the end of the torch. And there's just wind howling. And um, it's getting harder and harder to hear people because of the wind. Um, it's not quite raining, but again, the mist is kind of spraying up into the air, so it's damp. And as you approach, you see, um, well, roll, everybody roll a perception check for me. There we go, I've got your passive perceptions here too. All right. Nice. Whoa, very nice. I enjoy those virtual dice very really much. All right. Nice job. Okay. Um, Byron, you are you're kind of scanning the the crowd and, and you're so new to this town that you really don't know you know, none of the faces are familiar, but you're you're keeping an eye out for uh, you might be keeping an eye out for some specific individuals, but you don't you don't pick up on anything that that sort of cues you into acknowledgement of any of the characters that happen to be kind of forming this ring around. There's one individual that people are sort of crowding around. Uh, Erin, as you're looking around to sort of size up the competition, you're getting the sense that you might have to fight tonight. Um, yeah. You just you just kind of have that vibe as people are kind of looking at you and some people recognize you or acknowledge you other people don't really know who you are um, but you do look around and you see uh, Kreb in the crowd Kreb Schenker who is the proprietor of the empty net and the guy mm. that you had in, you the the four of you had interacted with the first time that you visited the empty net he's in the crowd 
Um, you hadn't previously seen him on this night, but he's there. Okay. Um, Theo, you're looking around, uh, and both, I guess, you're in Theo and Runar, you all see um, a familiar face in the crowd. You see this, um, you see this very strong looking, tall, clean shaven man with ruddy tan skin and a long brown braided hair that goes down to about the mid back, big thick single braid. And he's got this, this leather vest, this kind of Keo-ish style, stylized vest and these really nice leather bracers on his forearms. And uh, he's got two hand axes, one, on e one at either uh, hip on his belt. And he is familiar to you. He um, was one of the crows. And then, um, yep, that's, that's what you guys see at this point. So there's, there's one guy that's sort of in the middle of this crowd and you get the sense that he is, um, sort of the ringleader of this fight. You don't know who, you've never seen him before, but he is um, kind of talking with a bunch of the people a little bit away from where you guys are at this point. Hmm. The guy with the hand axes, he was one of the pros, right? Like the guy in charge, or did we talk to you anyway? Are you asking me, the DM? Yes. Oh. Um... Yeah, you would re you would recognize him as uh, their leader. Oh, shit! They guy. survived. Well, at least one of them did. Yeah. What was his name again? Again? Uh, they got it here somewhere. Is it Major Ursa? No. Major Ursa was the one that saved us. Yep. It works for the. Mariner's Guild. Oh, we're talking about okay. The leader of the Red Tarn Rose. Torburn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good old Tarn. Tarn. Nothing beats Tarn. So that's that's the lay of the land that you see here. Uh, it's a dark, cool night. The wind is howling, and people are amassing. Uh, there's probably thirty people that have made their way to the point of rocks. Cool. Um, while everyone's massing, I'm going to pull our crew together and I'm going to kind of like get us into a huddle. Are we hugging? Yeah, we're going to, we're in a huddle. We're going to like, like uh, get in a little circle, quiet circle so we can talk just amongst ourselves, but near everyone. The only fact is, like, are we hugging? No, a huddle, no, no, not no, no, a no, huggle. Huddle, 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 Theo, huddle. Huggle is a different thing. Yeah, we'll hug later. Wink, um, nudge. You know, normally I'm not into it, but right now I'm very drunk, so I'm still not into it. But fine. <laughs> yeah, what's our, uh, what's our play here? Guys, guys, I, uh, you know, I think maybe it'd be a good idea if we just designated one of us our leader and made them fight, and then the rest of us just came as, like, like, like uh, the, the people who, like, wash the blood off him. And you backing out now, battle. lad? <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to. Sounds back like out. you're backing down. No, no, I. I you I, know what? Please, I've, I've had a few fights in my life. A few more than I'm here to talk about. People are going to are you recognize sure? you. You have a reputation. If you don't fight, people are going to talk. Are these I fights with I weapons? I don't care what anyone says. Then how are you the famous one? Your face tells a different story. I'm not famous. Like everyone we've got running to know you. You're the famous one. Congratulations. Wait, I'm not famous. What? You're right. You're not. You're Byron. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm very drunk. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but Runar will have to fight other people. What people know. You're in the fort. Cole, like, why I, do I have to, have fight? to fight? You're famous. Um, honestly, He's not wrong. I think we all have to fight. If we all fight, well, what happens if the famous guy gets beat? Then you get free drinks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
Do we know what does this look like? Are? The kind of pit that the losers get thrown into the ri into the river. <laughs> um, I don't know what that would look like. I've does, never done this before. Does it look like it's like hand to hand, or is it like weapon fighting? It's hard to tell right now because you're yeah. um, you just you'd have you're it's such a foreign uh, experience and you haven't really asked anybody of what what the deal is all you know is that there's a there's a fight contest going on you know what i i will look around and, and yeah, see if i start can asking around a little bit if i can gauge uh like from my prior experience in fighting rings okay if, like this is an area where blood is commonly spilled in in quantities that would cause death all right roll a uh perception check Nice. I would say that to to get a get a feel for the level of seriousness, essentially, of, of what you guys have gotten yourself into, um, what you what you notice is not not bloodshed, but you notice that this area that is bounded by these five struggling torches at this point because of the wind. Um, there, there is the, 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 the grass on this bluff is, is matted down. It is trampled. It is, um, bare in a lot of places as if there's been a lot of foot traffic in a very small concentrated area. So you get the sense as one who has spent time in these, in these sorts of, um, situations in other areas that this is a relatively well-used uh location okay okay the other thing that you that you get out of that roll since you rolled so high is that you get the sense that this isn't this isn't necessarily some sort of a sanctioned event you don't see a single town guardsman what you see is a drunk mob of people looking for some action. Okay. Underground kind of vibe. You've been cool. to you've been to some areas where there is crowds and um, you know entertainment in between fights, and you've been you've been to some some higher end fighting, especially in Gradzul. Um, knowing the right people, you can get invited to some 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 pretty high-end uh, fighting challenges, but uh, this looks more sort of gutter punk brawl type of situation. And then, like I said, there you also notice that there's one person in particular that seems to be kind of uh, in charge or at least the focus of, of attention by a, a pretty sizable section of the group. All right, all right. Um, well, I feel I feel more comfortable about this, guys. Actually, now that I'm looking around a little bit. What changed? Uh, this is, uh, you know, this isn't being. This is this is kind of an underground. You know, ah, uh, gosh, how do I put this? I don't think any of us will die tonight. That's funny, because most of the underground events like this I've ever seen, you're more likely to die. So we will see who is right. I'll, I'll pat you on the back and say, you know, I don't think you've been to very many of these then. I've been to, like, three. None of them were good. Um, Dave, can I see Tarn? Yes, you noticed Tarn when uh, when you rolled your perception check earlier. All right, I'm gonna go talk to him. All right, you uh, you make your way over to Tarn, and he's he's sort of paying attention to this large group. He's kind of on the outskirts though, so he's not like in the middle of the mix, but he's definitely sort of listening in on what's happening. And as you walk up, he's like, "Oh, ho, ho, Runar Deg, I see you. You've made it to the fights, huh?" Good to see you, my friend. Told you he was famous. <laughs> Good to see you too. I see you made it. Oh yes, well. yes, yes, yes. The 
the Abbey. We cleared it out. Uh, as you said, there was, uh, there was not much to do uh, when we got there, but we did find the winding way. Oof. We had a little bit of trouble in there, but, um, you know, all in all, I think it went okay, although there was not as much uh, treasure as, as, the, uh, as that bard told us there would be. We were a little disappointed, but luckily, you know, uh, to their credit, the Mariner's Guild paid as they said they would. So, uh, you know, it was uh, profitable. That's good. Where, where's the rest of your crew? Where, where are all your men? Uh, in town, having some fun. Uh, Bear, Sorry. and then he points over and you... says, Bear is looking for a fight, so I brought him here. And you look, he, point, he gestures over and you see, um, you see Bear. And I don't know, I'll, I'll kind of re-describe him for you. But um, he's this really tall um, Goliath. And he's got a battle axe sort of strapped to uh, his, his, um, some leathers that he wears around his chest. But he's, other than that, he's pretty much uh, has no shirt on. He's got tribal tattoos on his head uh, and scars all over his hairless body. And then as he turns to kind of look back and he sees you and he kind of waves to you with a big old smile on his face. And you can see, you can remember that he's got that, um, a symbol of the, the red crow that's tattooed on his chest. And Tarn says, are you, uh, you, will you be fighting Runar and showing us your stuff tonight? Yes, it would be great to see you in action, my friend. Oh, I, uh, I haven't decided that yet. Well, the, uh, there is money on the line, and uh, the good fighters will walk away with coin. Yeah, so I've heard. Seems like a pretty popular event. Well, have you guys been here before? I have. Once before. And, uh, you know, I, I, always bet on my, I always bet on Bear. And he has uh, proven a uh, profitable friend. Let's put it that way, huh? Ha-ha! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> By the looks of him, he seems like a capable fighter. Indeed. I am looking forward to tonight. Tell me, what have you, uh, what have you been doing around Sarmash? I, I sort of figured that maybe you had moved on. Yeah, we've been looking for work here and there. I don't know, not much has come up. Mm. A lot of talk around town, though, especially about this uh, Dralian. Oh? Oh, yes, yes, the, uh, the murder. Merchant. Yes, yeah. I've heard of this. This rumor is flying around town. This was a friend of yours, no? Wow. Well, uh, employ employer, him. right? Yeah, I worked with him for a little bit. but mm. uh, So they asked me about, you know, if what my dealings were with him, and I, I told them all about it. Oh. Nothing, nothing very, you know, unusual, I guess you would say. Hmm. Have you heard anything about it? No, I have not, but um, I am sure that the town's guard will find uh, whoever did it, I would assume. I don't know. It's, politi it's political, I'm sure. The politics here are over my head, let's say. Hmm. But uh, I hear there are I hear I hear that. some gradzuls that uh, came to town uh, to take care of some of his business, tie up loose ends and stuff. That seems uh, like an interesting, uh, interesting, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah, interesting thing to see that Gradzul is paying so much attention. Hmm. Very Why strange. Why did you say that? Yeah, we're so far away. Ah. This podunk town of Saltmarsh. I mean, it's growing and it's bigger than the last time I was here, but, uh, you know, it's still a marsh town. Right. You can smell the whole marsh from here, you know. The wind changes. Oh, <laughs> on one side, you have the fish. On the other side, you've got the marsh. You know, it's uh, just a stopover point for us, of course. We are, we are headed out. Um, we're actually heading to Seaton tomorrow morning. So we, this is our last hurrah before we leave town. Uh, we have things to do, and so we're setting sail. But, you know, if you're looking for work, we actually had to turn down a job uh, at, the, at the mine. We were offered, you know, Manistered Copperlocks, the dwarven woman who runs the mine? 
Yes, I've you met her. I've heard of her. Yeah. Seems like they're having some trouble. She approached me uh, when we arrived uh, back in town, mentioned that they need some help out at the mine. So you might you might talk to her. They seem to have resources, you know. All right. Yeah, I will do that. Thanks for the tip. There's strange Good things luck. afoot. You should, uh, you know, watch your back in town I here. There's a. Uh, you heard about the the Sahagwin uh, stronghold. There's uh, rumors that there might be some sort of a battle brewing. With the, the lizard folk? No, no, with the Sahagwin. You know this, they are uh, much worse than the lizard folk. No, I haven't heard of that. You know, uh, there is a... There's been some naval activity too, you know. I, t I note these things because we we have our own ship and we uh, we take note of where the navy is, what their ac actions are. But you know, the Myrmidon is is back in port this evening. They had just left. They were supposed to head north, but they turned around. So something's happening. There's something going on in town. So just watch your back, my friend. You know, I'd like to uh, I'd like to run into you again sometime. Yeah. I uh, yeah, well. I hope that you're able to figure something out with this uh, Drally, and he was a friend of yours, I see. Um, I don't know. You know, what I've always said is you need to look at who benefits the most, and usually that's the motive. Right. Anyways, that's, that's shop talk. Tonight we, we see some fights. If, you, right, uh, yeah, if you're good. looking to... Uh, to get in on the fighting, you talk to that man over there, and he points over at the guy who's in the middle of the of this kind of throng of of people, uh, and who's kind of shouting orders. And he's got a little. Uh, you can see now that he's got this this book that he's writing things down in. So he you kind of get the feeling that he's like a bookie, uh, the pit master type type of thing. All right. Well, good luck on your bets tonight. Yes, you too, my friend. Good luck. May fortune be in your favor. Okay. I'm just going to like saunter back to the group. Well, he mentioned a lot. <laughs> I think if there's a lot, he was not mentioned. I think you had a long time. Yeah. What well, did he say? What did he say? It looks as though he's got a fighter of his in the match tonight. Big guy. Lots of tattoos. Scarring. Oh, the nice, uh, the, the, the Goliath fellow. <laughs> you yeah, think you could take large him? Human. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. He looks like he's been through a lot. Um, we were talking about Dralian. He mm. thought it was pretty strange that the people came from so far away to take care of his business after words and he said to he advi he always advises to look at who profits well i can think of one person who profited from albrecht's death right that other merchant sophia sophia as well yeah that's true his sister his sister hmm. she uh may be up to inherit something like a nice house and she did nice kick us out of her house instead of letting us investigate I feel like if her motives were good she wouldn't have I thought that was just because um, she was embarrassed knowing you no to be ushered out like that I definitely get the vibe that she's hiding something maybe it's her tax returns <laughs> I'm going to go sign up here and then I can fight and Runar I will be back <laughs> alright everyone knows she should be releasing the last four years of those <laughs> What about, uh, what about this other merchant, uh, this, the, the guy with, it's always smiling. What's his name? Uh, Marcel. You know, the guy that we, we got the posting for the missing boat and he was, uh, it was one of his boats. I can't remember his name right now. Is that An Anders? Yeah, Anders. Might have profited as well by offering.
buffing the competition. But I guess either one is suspicious. He does suspicious. seem a little shifty. Who are you guys talking about? Sorry, I had to run and grab a beverage. Anders? Uh, what's, yeah, the Anders. Anders what's that guy's Solmore. Name again? Solmore. The guy with the so with the big we, smile. Yeah. Yeah. As far as we knew, he was Dralian's competition in town, right? That was um, the story. That's the sense that you got from an earlier line of questioning. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and Theo, did you say that you were gonna you're gonna do something? Theo is going to go sign everybody but Byron up to fight. Oh. Everybody but Byron. <laughs> Okay. Byron was feeling pretty good about it now. <laughs> All right. So you walk up to the, and you kind of make your way through the crowd, kind of, you know, push, kind of getting some elbows in there to kind of get up to the front row. And at this point, you see this, you see this human man. He's got uh, an eye patch on his left eye. He's got a big, bushy, unkept mustache. And the rest of his face is covered in like this, this really dense five o'clock shadow. Um, and the mustache just looks like it's out of control. He's, he's relatively short, probably about 5'5". Five, five. Um, he has uh, sort of this long, stringy gray hair that is uh, just un... It's just kind of loose around his shoulders, about shoulder length. And uh, he's got uh, some dirty, like this dirty shirt on. And he just, he looks kind of, he just looks like a bum. But he's definitely, you get the vibe as you walk up, you get the vibe that he's sort of in charge of what's going on here because everybody's sort of listening to him. And when he speaks up and shouts at somebody, they kind of take note. Um, and he, as you walk up, you just start to hear as he gets into his spiel and he says, we've got two different fights here tonight, fellas. Fists and steals. And he kind of looks around at everybody as he says this, trying to kind of build a little, little drama, if you will. And he says, fists, rules are simple. No armor, no weapons. Standard buy-in for fists is 50 gold pieces. Winner takes 100, plus 10% of the crowd's pot. Uh, of course, you can challenge our champion if you want. And he gestures over to... Um, he, he gestures over to this dwarven fellow, bald... A uh, big red uh, beard that, that kind of goes up the back of his neck, and it's kind of braided on either side. And he's got his shirt off, and he's pretty ripped. Um, and he's sweaty. He's already just sweating. Or maybe it's the water that's splashing over. Uh, but he sort of, as, as people kind of turn to look at him, he kind of flexes a little bit. You can just kind of see he's getting pumped up for this thing. He says, if you want to if you want to battle Clark... 20, 200 gold buy-in. Winner takes 410% of the crowd's pot. And he kind of looks around and he goes, then there's steals. Pretty straightforward, gentlemen. Armor, weapons, whatever techniques you want to bring to the table. Only rule is you don't endanger any of the patrons here tonight or any of the visitors. Standard entry for steals, 100 gold. Winner takes 200 plus 20% of the crowd's take. We have a champion for steals too. Buy in for that, 600 gold. Winner takes 1,200 plus 20%. Now I should also mention to you, oh, and he kind of gestures over to, um, to the champion and you see this, this um, black skinned fellow who has a, um, his hair, his black hair, which is kind of braided, is pulled up into a top knot. And then, but it's long, so it kind of goes back behind him and he's got this, um, interesting leather necklace with these different colored leather triangles that are sewn to this really ornate leather um, uh, strap that goes around his neck. And he's got, as you look over, he's just sort of taking this, um, he's got this half cape that looks like it's made out of some sort of a heavy fabric that he's kind of taking off and handing to uh, someone that he's with. And they're kind of folding it up. And, he's, uh, and then he pulls out his... Um, Let's see, what does he have again? He has a, a oh, he's got, he has a maul. So you see this, that he's, he's holding on to this giant, um, essentially a giant hammer. It's a big two-handed hammer that he, uh, he starts to kind of swing around a little bit. 
And then the guy who's been telling you all this information, he says, and now I should also mention that we've got uh, some clerics here who, uh, if you fall in battle, they can bring you up. It'll cost you 10 gold up front, no, non-refundable. Otherwise, you're fucked. Consider it insurance should things not go well for you, huh? So whoever wants to fight, uh, you know, let me know. Let's get this thing started. Theo just kind of stepped up like, yeah, right here, Fist. All right, you want to do Fist, what's your name? Theo. Theo, all right, Theo. Fist, you gonna, you want standard buy-in or champion? I am looking at that champion and thinking I'm not gonna pay to have my ass kicked that hard. For standard. Okay. He says, uh, that'll be 50 gold. Theo hands over 50 precious gold pieces. Okay, so you hand it to this guy, and he says, fantastic, and he hands it to a guy next to him who seems to be the, the money man. And he says, what about the clerical insurance? You want to purchase that? 10 gold. Nah, I think I'll be okay. Sounds good, sounds good. All right, all right. Who else wants to fight? And he kind of looks around. Who's next? Theo. I, I go back to the group. Yeah. Hi, can I borrow one gold? One whole gold? One whole entire gold piece. You know, I like you so much. I'm just going to give it to you. At this point, you hear the guy say, he kind of shouts, or it's not him, but some other people shout, what about Eren Coldbiter? <laughs> and, and a bunch of people kind of turn and look over in your direction, Eren. I wish I had a luchador mask. Um, <laughs> what do you think, Eren? Yeah, I'll step up to this guy. Eren, Eren, challenge the champion. The dwarf Clark? Yes. Or, I'm not uh, going to challenge weapon. somebody named Clark, because we all know what's on the backside of that. <laughs> Kent? <laughs> Griswold? Griswold? Oh, that's fair. Yeah, I'll fight Clark Griswold. <laughs> Um, he's been working out. You don't want to do that. What do he I? Ripped. There's a couple Can other I... guys that you can fight for standard too. You don't have to fight the champion. Right. Um, I don't know what kind of sense do I get of the champion. Roll an insight check. Yeah. You kind of eye him up. It's kind of like one of those. Uh, what do they call those in the boxing when they? When How about they, that? When they do Ooh. the. Uh, when they do it nice when they do like the press before and they're like you know they've, they've already got their shirts off and they're kind of giving each other some yeah. some, yep. some attitude um you get the sense that he is uh wow awesome you get He's the awesome. sense that he is a badass um you can see like. as you look closer at him he's got scars across his chest his arms are huge as if he swings an, uh, a, a hammer or, um, or a pickaxe or something like that. Um, you can see that he's got like rock dust in his beard. So you get the feeling that, uh, you know, maybe he's, uh, he's one of the miners perhaps. Uh, but he's pretty ripped and he, at, you know, he was, he was kind of flexing and kind of, you could tell that he's just ready to go. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely ready to go. Do I, do I, I get the feeling that it would be a, quite a challenge were I to step to this guy? You get the sense that you'd have a chance. Hmm. How much was it to fight him? 300, 300 I think. Fists for the, it's going to be 200 gold. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah, Winner takes a, 400 and 10% yeah, That's a bit of more pot. than I got. Yeah, I don't think um, any of us can afford champion by him. I could. Well, then you know what you need to be doing. <laughs> you, could, you could pool your resources. If, if you really want to fight him, we could split it. I mean, a part of me does, but a part of me is like, that's <laughs> a little nuts. Theo, Theo will give you 50 gold pieces to buy into that. Maybe 75. What the hell? I'm literally betting everything I have just to participate in the steel match. So, all right. So while you're while right. you're thinking about that, Erin, yeah. um, Byron, what's uh, what are you thinking? I'm gonna do 
the steel match Steals. for 100 and I'm going to buy the cleric insurance just in case. So you're going to do the standard steals, uh, 100 gold and 10, 10 gold insurance. Got it. Okay. Awesome. He looks back to Erin. Well, what do you say? You're going to do it? Clark is yeah, like, but, he kind of so... looks over you and just nods at you and gives you like a... You know, he's not trying to intimidate you necessarily, but he's kind of like, yeah. let's let's do this. Yeah, I guess, Dio, you said uh, you could borrow me 50? I will give you 50. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll hand, I'll hand the man 210. Okay. So you're going to go. Because I want fix. some insurance. We ain't got a cleric. <laughs> yeah, we don't Champion. have Champion. You're going to give him 200 gold buy-in and 10 gold insurance. Got it. Okay. All right. And then, so some other people step forward and they, you know, they buy into some fights. Um, the champion bout is already taken, obviously, for fists. Uh, but there's a champion steals. And then there's a couple different standard. Anybody can be in a standard fight. So there's a bunch of guys that are just kind of sitting there ready to go if people want to, you know, pair up with them. So... This guy uh, takes, you know, takes a bunch of, uh, takes the all the, all the entry fees and everything, and he he's got. You can tell, uh, looking at him, that he, he keeps pretty meticulous records, and so he's got everything written out really well. Um, and he kind of looks around as people start to get ready for the fights to begin to see if there's any additional folks that want to get in on the action. Hint, hint. Uh, Runar, is that something that you want to get in on? Cough, cough, famous Marine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who do I fight, though? Depends. Do you, want? do you want to do, what do you want to fight? Do you want to fight fists or steels? Uh, well, I guess I don't know the mechanics of the fighting with fists. Like, how does that work when you're not? I'm, well, I've got mechanics, so I'm, I'm going to fill you in on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I've got, I've got some pit. We're not going to use traditional, you know, combat because that'll take too long. Uh, nice. I've got some pit fighting mechanics that I'm going to explain to you guys in a minute. Oh, dope. A mini game. Yep. I X, love X, it. X, I X, love X. it. And it's either that or fight with the weapons like normal. Yep. You can go steals or you can go fists. And then if you want to go steals, you, if you're going to do steals, you can either do a standard steals or you can go champion steals and you can fight Dox. Dox is that, that guy with the mall. Yes. Can I? It was 600 gold to buy in on that though, right? It is 600 gold to buy in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Winner, winner takes home 1,200 and 20% of the crowd's pot. Ugh. Can I? Roll an insight on that guy to see if I could take him. Fuck yeah. Roll an insight. All right. All right. So that's an insight, not perception. Or is it perception? Uh, it would be an insight, insight check. Okay. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. He looks pretty, he looks very tough. Uh, you get the sense you get the sense that it would be uh, it would be a challenging bout. Yeah. Um, just looking at him, he's he's not as big and like bulky as say Clark, for example. Um, right. But he is just all muscle. He's taller. Um, he's a human uh, male. And he uh, he just he's he is very. He just kind of stands out from the crowd. He doesn't seem like the rest of these drunken and, and neither does clark really um these guys seem to be here to make money right they're not just drunk buffoons that want to get into a fight and you get the sense from this docs guy that he's he's a well-trained uh fighter but mm. you never know you're also a well-trained fighter right you faced a vampire this week what else can stop you <laughs> I don't know, 600 gold, that's a lot, man. I guess I could afford it, but... What's it going to be? That's true, you did just make a shit ton of money. 
Uh, that's like, it's like a third of what I have, though. You you have uh, six hundred gold is a third of what you have. Yeah. Theo is now staring at your money bag, <laughs> in the bag going, "What?" <laughs> yeah. It looks That's so small. Wandering through his six hundred gold, you know, so he's like, "Oh, I only have twelve hundred after this. What am I gonna do with that?" There was some shit that went can... down before Theo arrived. That that you don't that you're just starting to get to know about Runar after hearing some of these stories. Yeah, why did you have to buy money from me? He has all. He has all. Why yeah, isn't that bankroll the entire operation? <laughs> The bookie guy looks at you and says, Ah, Runar Dig. Looks like uh, it's your lucky day. No one's taken the champion steals yet. Oh, man. Look at this, but guys. I... Runar Dig is here. And people are like, Whoa. Here. Here's the thing. Here's the Runar thing. If I... if I lose, though, like, what will that do to my reputation around town? You still went up against the champion. You don't I lose. mean, it's not like you're losing to a fucking chump. <laughs> That's true. Oh, and winning, God. what would that do to your reputation? That's true. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I wish I, I had said that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I feel so bare bones right now with Runar. He's, he's a simple guy. Yeah, well, make a simple amount of money. <laughs> All right. Fuck it, I'll go oh, for it. Yes. Oh yeah, yes. the Steel's Do champion, it. and the insurance. <laughs> oh, thank God. I have caused everyone to make terrible decisions. My next. Oh God. <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh man. Yeah. And as as you as you uh, as you buy in, uh, there's just sort of this um, this wave of whispers just reverberate through the crowd that there's a champion fight. Champion steals. She, Runar Dag is going to take on Dox. Did you guys hear about it? Runar, he's here. He's here. He's going to take Dox out. And uh, and the guy who's who's taking the money, he, he like claps his hands really loud in the air. And everybody kind of stops talking. He says, all right, folks, here's the lineup. And we'll take some bets here. He goes, first off, we've got in the, the fist standard, we've got Theo. Theo is going to be fighting um, Malwin. And you look over Theo as this guy, who, this bald guy, um, dark goatee and, and mustache. He's got these kind of like white robes on and he starts kind of like bouncing up and down. And like he's, he's kind of like doing the, you know, air boxing a little bit, shadow boxing. He's kind of getting ready. Theo um, just is looking at him and taking <laughs> off his uh, scale mail. He's like, why is he wearing a robe? Are you a monk? Are you a priest? Are you a priestly monk? Are you asking him? Yeah. He's like, uh, I spent some time in a monastery for a while, but uh, I don't consider myself a monk anymore. I just like the look. You know, it has a good aesthetic. I'm a yeah, good friend. Yeah. Come on. It's kind Let's of my thing. All right. Good to meet you. And then he you says, too. and then we've got for steals, we've got our steel standard fight over here. We've got, uh, what's what did you say your name was again? Brian? Oh, no, sorry. I'll, Byron. I'll with that. We've got <laughs> Byron over oh, here, right. who's going to be taking on Bear, and you <laughs> you see uh, you see the Goliath come out, and he's and he comes over to you and he goes, he goes, nice to meet you. It's really really nice to meet you. And he's got this big <laughs> smile on his face, and he's just he's really friendly. He kind of shakes your hand, and it's a little off putting how nice he is, but he's like, this is going to be a great fight. I'm really excited about this. It's going to be really fun. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. And he's he's just Byron, really jazzed. Byron. Watch out. He's very sneaky. And then I, I will say nothing to him. I will just look at him. Do you shake his hand? Uh, yes. OK. All right. So he's, he's pretty happy about that. Um, and then the, this guy uh, whose name is uh, Smitty McRae, he, he turns and he says, all right, folks. And then we've got our champion. We've got two champion bouts tonight. First off, the fist champion bout. We've got Erin Colbiter. And everybody just go, just erupts in cheers. And some people are like, boo, fuck that guy. You know, they're <laughs> not necessarily a, a favorite, but people are, people are passionate about their love or hate of you. We um, all cheer for Colbiter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, he'll be fighting Clark. 
and Clark kind of walks out and he's flexing and everything and Clark. he kind of comes up to you and he he uh he looks you up and down and says looking forward to it and he shakes your hand yeah shake his hand yeah and then folks Likewise. this doesn't happen every night we've got ourselves a steel champion match taking on the the reigning champion docs over here and everybody nobody really gets too excited but people are like yeah um, and he's, he kind of looks around, but he doesn't really care. He's, he's pretty oblivious to it. And taking on Docs is none other than Runa Dag. And everybody just goes, yeah. Just, <laughs> we like, also cheered last People are just going crazy. <laughs> like, Runa is here. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And so there's just all kinds of um, excitement about that. And so then what happens is people start betting. And so people are coming up to Smitty McRae. And they're, you know, they're putting their money on different, um, on different fighters for these four matches. Actually, there's probably more than these four, but these are the ones that we'll focus on, obviously. Um, and so a lot of betting happening. So um, I don't know if you guys are interested in, in betting, but you are more than welcome to, uh, if you want to place a bet on for or against any of the four fights that I described, you can do so. I'll put okay. one copper yeah, down. Was just here to fight. <laughs> one copper. I don't I'm have me. a lot of money left. <laughs> All right, so Byron, you're gonna do one copper piece on on Erin. On Erin, yes. Okay. Theo walked over. Um, as you as you try. Oh, sorry. One 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 thing. As you try to give him a copper, he's like, uh, "We only we only take gold and up. We don't Brown. take copper here." I, I slouch. Theo walks over, puts a gold in your hand, pat, pats your face. Good luck. I put one gold on Erin. Okay. Anyone else want to make a bet? I'll put, I'm going to put 10 gold on each of our guys. Okay. So 10 so gold on, 10 on Erin. On each. Okay. On Erin. Yep. Erin, Theo, and on Byron. Theo. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Any other bets? All right. Betting from Theo. Okay. Erin? No betting from Erin? No betting from okay. Erin. <laughs> All right. So here's how this is going to work. Uh, we are going to, let's see, we're going to start out with the uh, fists standard, which is Theo versus Malwin. Um, and here's how it's going to work. So each match is composed of three rounds. It's the best out of three to win unless there's a knockout. A knockout is an automatic win. At the beginning of the round, we're going to roll initiative to see who gets to go first. And at this point, you need to choose either a strength-based skill or a dexterity-based, uh, like acrobatics or athletics, basically, as your fighting style, quote-unquote. Mm-hmm. And we, that's what you're going to use to roll. And it's going to be a D20 roll with your either athletics bonus or your acrobatics bonus. It's, and it's going to be contested against whatever they choose to use. The winner, you know, whoever rolls highest wins. Now, a knockout is a natural 20. So if you roll a natural 20, it's an automatic knockout. Or if you, um, if you win the roll by more than five points, there's a possible knockout. And that, that takes a con, uh, constitution save to avoid being oh, uh, nice. rendered unconscious. Okay. So that's what happens yeah. during the fighting. Um, between rounds, so there's going to be like a break in between rounds, short break. The combatants can try to, so there's an action, it's called a non-combat action, where you can choose to make a charisma, intimidation, you can try to use sleight of hand to do something sneaky, um, which could give you a benefit in the next round. And that benefit is a D4. So you would, you would get to add a D4 if you, if you do something that, um, you know, that uh, makes sense. Um, so those are just some examples of a non-combat thing that the combatant can do. Now, if you are, there's a couple of things that give you an automatic D4 benefit. So, uh, if you have a tavern brawler feat, you get an, you get an automatic D4. 
It's a if, lovely feat. If you have superiority dice, like Battle Masters and others have, if they have that uh, martial, uh, there's a martial feat that you can take where you get superiority die, you would get an extra D4. Barbarians, if uh, they can use a rage to get a D4. Uh, monks can use key, a key point to get a D4. Um, so, I can, so I can say, I'm going to spend a key point on this round yep. and get a D4? Yep. Okay. Yep. Absolutely, you can do that. And if you guys can think of something else for your class that makes sense that I haven't added to that list, and we'll talk about it and see if it works. Uh, how do you feel about the dueling fighting style for a fighter? Yeah, would I that... would. Uh, sure, I'll give you. A, you can. You can have it. Fighting, and fighting pits. Uh, is it a? Let me see. Is it something that you have like a certain number of? Uh, no, Duelist, no it's, it's, it's their it's level. Plus two bonus. Let me look at it. Yeah, it's the fighting as long as style. Yeah, I'll, I'll link it to you. Yeah, I see it. You get a plus two bonus to damage. I will say that, um, I will say this. If you roll a potential knockout, you get, uh, the person will have a negative two to their constitution save. Nice. Deal. Deal. I'll okay, take nice. it. All right. Good. Nice. All right. Um, so, yeah, if you guys, like, I don't know, Theo, if there's something that would fit for you or um, Runar for you. Well, is it the same rules for weapon fighting? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. See, um, all of the stuff I can think of for Theo is all kind of magic or curse based. And um, Theo doesn't want to do that in this fight. So, I'm okay. not be using good. any of that. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't like have. I'm just like a champion fighter, so I don't have like. You could use your fight. you could use your action surge, for example. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, to to add a d4, uh, okay. during one because you only have one action sur action surge, so you could use that in one of the rounds. Okay. If you wanted to. Nice. And I'm sorry. What was the d4? What could you apply it to? Sorry. It's to your uh to your your roll off. So everybody's gonna eat. Both of you are gonna roll a d20, and whoever rolls highest wins. The d4 is added to that roll. Okay. So here's my question: If this is so, is this is a is a round two rolls? A round is a, one contested roll. So one roll for each okay. each combatant is one, that's one round. So ultimately, and this is just a little maybe a little nitpicky, but. Why are we rolling initiative? Because you could potentially knock somebody out with a roll with a natural twenty. With your oh, first oh, I see. So if you okay. if let, if you win initiative so and you I'll, roll a natural twenty, that person doesn't get a chance to swing even. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. So it's not like a contested. It is a contested roll, but it's the person who wins goes first, and then if that other person isn't knocked out, they get to roll. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. Final question. Does the special ability D4 stack with mm -hmm. the between round D4? Yes. So we could get two D4. You could have up to two D4. Nice. Okay. What? Okay. I'm, I'm lost. Then. You'll see how it works. You're not the first fight. So just, just watch how it works and we'll see if you have questions before your fight. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, now, one other thing that I should mention. We have, I, I mentioned the non-combat, or the, uh, the in-between um, rounds non-combat yeah. action that the fighter can take. Yeah. Uh, there's also non-combat actions that the rest of you can take. Um, so... Like pump up the crew? <laughs> you can pump up the crowd. You can pump up your own team. Um, it also... Let's see, so non-combat party members have an opportunity to take. So if you can, you know, those same things that I mentioned, like the uh, intimidation or, uh, perf you know, think of, think of a skill and tell me what you think it would do, essentially. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a skill check. You, you figure out how you would use it, and I'll, I'll tell you if it's justified or not justified. And nice. you and you could potentially add a D four to your the, whoever's fighting. Okay. All right. 
All right, so let's give it a shot. This is just this. I I put this together. We'll see how it works. Like it. All right. So um, so Theo, you step out into this the the ring, and uh, it's basically just this ring that's formed by all the people that are watching, and people are cheering and yelling, and some of them are still drinking ales, and the the wind is howling, and the torches are flickering like really violently in the wind, um, and you step into this ring, and you see. Malwin step out again. He's like this kind of squat little human bald guy who's got these like robes on and he kind of starts kind of bouncing around back and forth and uh, and the Smitty McCree comes out and says all right Let's do this. It's our first fist standard bout and he and then he kind of walks out of the ring and that's and then everybody just kind of like stuck they're quiet and so let's do uh, an initiative roll Oh, I was oh, about to say that wasn't bad, and then the guy has holy shit. He has a holy shit plus nine. Yeah, plus nine he has a uh, yeah. That's he, way faster than me. He's pretty good. Good thing I'm not fighting him. <laughs> okay, so he is going to <laughs> he is going to use a dexterity roll, and he's going to use a key point. So it's going to be a d20 plus a d4. So let me roll that. Oof. Oops. Oh. So he rolls a Ouch. four. So he, he, come, he comes up to you and he like, he does this big old swing at you as he kind of like ducks down and swings at you. But you kind of see it coming because he's a little awkward coming out of the gate. And you sort of step to the side and just grazes you barely. Huh. Well, that is, um, that is a technique. Um, I was going to use strength athletics if that's an option. It is. Um, and uh, could I use deception to essentially fight in kind of like lots of feints and um, you know, you know, striking this way and then trying to go the other way? Yeah, Just absolutely. Kind of sure, angle. that'll work. So I add a d4. All right. So is it just strength or is it athletics? It's athletics. Athletics, it is. So roll normal. Yeah. Nice. Hold on. And 1d4. Oh, man, you're going to fucking just KO this guy in the first round. Yeah. So so as he comes up to you and he and he kind of grazes you, you just you kind of duck to the side and that's why he misses you and then you come down on him and just smash him in the side of the head as he moves past you. Uh, and so you have an opportunity because you rolled, uh, you won by more than five points. He has to make a Constitution save versus a DC ten, and the and the save DC changes depending on the round. It's a normal roll. Oof! <laughs> you knock oh, no. him that out. One. You that knock him out one. cold. That was a nat one. He just drops to the ground, and everybody's just like, "Yeah!" yeah! And they're yeah, cheering and the they're going crazy. Down, looks at his fist, looks down. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So Smitty McCree comes out oh. and he kind of like lifts your hand up in the air and everybody starts cheering again. And a bunch of people are pissed off because they lost money on the bout. <laughs> and, and other people are super jazzed because they bet on you. And um, nice. Holy crap. That was cool. Um, so we didn't even get a chance to do a non-combat. That's great. Wow. Theo just kind of walks back over the group and goes, um, I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but hey. <laughs> All right. People are like patting you on the back as you walk, as you walk out of the ring. Um, there it's a, Smitty comes on. He's like, what a great way to start the night. Wow. Did you look at this? Look at this. And, and there's a. There's a couple people that come and grab Malwin and they sort of drag him off the, off the uh, out of the ring and everything. And he goes, "All right, folks, now it's time for our standard steals fight." And he says, "We've got uh, Byron versus the Bear." And so the two of you kind of walk out, and Bear's got this big old grin on his face. He's just so happy. He kind of looks around and he uh, he pulls out his uh, battle axe. 
and he's like, he comes up kind of, as, as you're getting ready, he's like, well, <clears throat> whatever happens, happens. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, Smitty McCree steps out of the, out of the, uh, out of the way, and the two of you roll for initiative. Dave, mm -hmm. real, real quick, do you have to call your D4 before you roll? Yes. You want to use it? Okay. Yep. All right, so Byron has the initiative in this round. Are you going to use uh, athletics, or are you going to use acrobatics for your main? I'm going with acrobatics. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use uh, sleight of hand to try and make it... Uh, so I'm gonna like I'm gonna like move around a little bit, but I'm gonna try and grab his pants and kind of pull him down a little bit. I like it. All right. Yeah, you can use a D4 for that. So it'll be like kind of like a faint slash. I'm gonna pull his pants down. Nice. <laughs> and then roll your D4. All right, so 16. Um, so you're able to like kind of dip down really fast as he's kind of getting ready for the fight to start, and you just yank on his, this, he's got this like leather pair of shorts, and you just yank on him, and they kind of come down a little bit, and you look up at him, and he just looks pissed that you've embarrassed him, and you can tell he just, he just starts to go aggro, and he's like raging and he's and he kind of yanks up his pants and he comes at you um, and he is going to use athletics and he is raging so he's going to get a d4 for rage oh no <laughs> the power of rage compels him come on come on Ooh. oh oh it's, oh, it's, it's a same roll. yep it's a <laughs> the exact same roll yep what? the exact same roll so he uh he swings at you with his axe and he just cuts across your armor and it cuts into your chest a little bit and you start bleeding. Um, and that's the end of the first round and you both kind of step back and he's kind of yanking up his pants and, uh, and you've got this sort of cut across your chest. And so there's a couple minutes in between, like I mentioned, if you have something that you want to do in between. Um, we'll start with Byron. I don't know if there's anything you want to do. Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my hood. Okay. And then I'm going to attempt to make myself blend in with the crowd. So I'm going to lean up. I'm going to kind of get close to the crowd, kind of try to blend in, trying to make myself kind of stealthy, kind of hard to see. Okay. And what is, what is the intention of that? Um, basically for him to be confused as to where my location is so that I can – bounce back into the combat while he's not while he's not seeing me and pretty much take him out in one swing. Oh, you're going to kind of do a sneak attack on him? Yeah, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and sneak up on him with I even though we're in a fighting ring, I figure you know, I pull my hood up and mm -hmm. I'm going to try and blend in with the crowd a little bit, you know, stay really close, make it almost look like I'm one of the people participating with the cheering so that he looks around a little confused. And while he's looking around, I'm just going to pop in and stab him in the neck. All right. Give me a second. So here. that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to assassinate him. You know, I am used so you're to gonna, fighting for the, to the death. Let me just get this straight. You're going to attack him before the next round begins? Um, <laughs> no, I want to attack him as the next round begins, but like the moment the round begins, and I want him to be kind of confused as to where I exactly am. All right, well, let's do this. We'll see how that plays out. I'm not going to guarantee the D4 at this point. We're going to see what initiative lands us. And then we'll make a decision on that plan. Good deal. Um, Theo. Yep. What do you want to do, Theo? Would love to work the crowd using persuasion to kind of just talk them up and get people cheering for uh, Runar Day. <laughs> for Runar? I'm oh, sorry, Byron. You're right. For Byron. Oh, for Byron. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're kind of planting some the seed of excitement uh, and support for Byron. 
Uh, roll a persuasion check for me. All right. Yep, that's enough. So um, the the crowd starts to get really fired up, and they're chanting Byron, 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 Byron. And so you get you get a little bit of a charge from that, Byron. So um, you'll get a D four for that. And um, and because he has Tavern Brawler, he's going to get a D four for that. D4. Okay, so the two of you come back in, and what we need to do first is roll initiative to see who gets to attack first this round. Ooh, nice. Okay. Uh -huh. Nice. So because you have initiative, I'll let you take the D4 uh, from oh, your yes. from your plan. So you've got an additional two D4. Ooh. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna since I the round starts, the very moment the round starts, I'm gonna have been like standing pretty much like I'm a crowd member, and I'm just gonna sidestep a couple times around the edge of the circle and just bring my rapier across his throat. Okay. Uh, Nice. Not natural though, right? No, not natural. Okay. <laughs> well, not that wow. That's a good roll. <laughs> he just wow. Used the ball. Yeah. Not wow. complaining at all. That's amazing. Okay. Um, he is going to also get a 2d4 because he's raging and he has tavern brawler. So let me see how this plays out here. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Another no one. matter what, no matter what, I'm 14. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. you beat him by five. five. So he's going to roll a constitution check. Come on, come on. And it's the second round, so the DC changes. It's harder. And he gets negative two, right? Uh, because of, remind me why. His duelist feet. Uh, duelist oh, yeah. Feet. Right. Yep. So this will be minus two. So it'll be an 11. He fails. You cut him across the throat <laughs> and it just explodes. You hit his, his artery and it just sprays out on the crowd and the crowd just goes berserk and he just hits the ground, just smashes on the ground and you're just standing over the top of him and people, some people are booing. Um, some people are, uh, cheering, obviously probably the people who just won are cheering. Uh, but there's a, there's a certain group of people who are just sort of not happy with how that played out. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to take my hood down. And, and immediately, the uh, crowd. there's a cleric that runs over to, uh, the slain Goliath and, uh, and they, they, they bring him back to, uh, they stabilize him. And you can see that Tarn, Tarn comes over and he's, he's like super concerned about his friend and um, he kind of looks over at you, uh, Theo, or not Theo, Byron, and just gives you a dirty look and shakes his head. And then they kind of drag off the Goliath to the, to the side. And meanwhile, people are just going crazy. They're just super, they're, there's just massive amounts of bloodshed happening here in the fight pit. Nice, okay. That was pretty vicious. Yeah. I'm not betting against him. Right. <laughs> well, he's he's been in he's been in some fight pits before. Mm -hmm. I All right. I have spent two years fighting in a fight pit. So at this point, there's there's some there's some time in between as there's other uh, standard fights happening, and you see a couple people just get destroyed on the battlefield, uh, both in the fists and in the steels bouts. Um, there's some really, there's some much uh, more endurance-based fights where they go three rounds instead of just one and two rounds like these did. But um, there's a couple other knockouts, and, and the crowd is just, they're just ravenous and loving it. And there's Theo. just money getting but thrown around. Theo would love to uh, take this time to find um, Kreb. Okay, sure. 
easy enough. He is surrounded by a couple of his cronies, and they're they look like they're pretty happy. And Crab is kind of counting his counting his coin as you walk up to him. Just kind of sidle up to him, and uh, so um, and while watching the fight, just kind of lean over and step. So um, I hear you're the uh, gentleman who runs the uh, empty net, huh? Yeah, who are you? My name's Theo. I like getting in fights. Um, yeah, nice, nice, uh, nice fight. That was great. I hope you didn't lose money on. No, I made money. My Owens, his time has come. It was a little weird the thing with the rope. I, I don't get it. <laughs> what but, do you want, um, Theo? Huh? I, I heard you might occasionally know how things go down in town, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. I um. Maybe. Well, I was in town to um collect money owed from a certain man for a certain reason. Um, and that man is dead. Uh, and I'm kind of pissed about that because I want my fucking money. And why is this my problem? I don't know. I heard you heard things. I was wondering if you heard anything about um, maybe someone took care of uh, Drelian. Who? Drelian. Oh, the rich yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Somebody did take care of him, took care of him real good. You uh, wouldn't happen to have an idea who that might have been, would you? If I made it a habit of divulging information like that, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today. So whether I did or whether I didn't, what's it to you? And why should I tell you? You got, it's, it would cost you a lot of coin to get that sort of information. Because that motherfucker owes me money, and I want it from him because he stuck it after he raided the fucking place. I want my goddamn money. Let me ask so, you this. You showed up with that with Runar Dag, huh? I saw you walk in here. Yeah, I'm an associate. Yeah. You know, it ain't it ain't hard to discover that uh, that son of a bitch has been running pretty tight with the town guard, that Eliander Fireborn. Seems to me, talking to you could get a guy into trouble. No, talking to me isn't going to get me you in trouble because if you help me, I make sure that no one finds out where I learned anything uh -huh. as opposed to guards asking around and maybe asking the wrong people, which would be someone else entirely. So let me ask you this. How do I know I can trust you? You don't, but I don't know I can trust you. That's how this works. That's why I pay you money to, for you to tell me things. Yeah. That's not how we do business here in Salt Marsh, friend. I don't know where I you're from. You. Yeah. But uh, loyalties are hard won and important around here. Now you've gained some loyalty with me and my crew. Maybe I help you out. Maybe I don't. But... Uh, Without knowing who you are, what you're capable of, or where your where your loyalties lie around here, it's not for me to get involved. I understand. Uh, that being the case, is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, I might have something for you, just to kind of see, test out your capabilities. Why don't you uh, Why don't you stop by the empty net tomorrow? Uh, about midday, we'll talk. I got something for you. You're a good man. I like that. Good luck tonight. I make no promises, but uh, well, we'll see. Life is uncertain, as many dead men have said. Yeah, exactly. And Theo just wanders back over. All right. Um, all right, so more fights are happening. Um... Everybody roll a perception check for me while you're watching the bouts. Roll good. I rolled okay. Yeah. Noise. Runar Dag coming through. Could be the last perception check he ever makes. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. That bad, huh? All right, so uh, Byron is just pretty jazzed about his big win against Bear. I think some of you that have met Bear and have, especially you, uh, 
Runar, you know, you've, you've talked the most with Tarn and his crew and sort of, you, you almost feel like a little, a little weird about the whole thing. But um, what you notice, Runar, is you look, you're looking around the crowd, kind of surveying the scene. You, you look over at, um, you look over at Docs, and you see him, you know, just kind of getting ready, and he's kind of fastening some, some, uh, you know, armor, and he's going, he's looking over his gear a little bit, and everything, and you keep scanning the crowd, and all of a sudden you see this, this dark figure, almost sort of floating around the periphery of the of the uh, of the fighting ring as the fights are happening. Oh shit! And it, it looks right away. You're like, uh oh, uh, and you see this this creature that you know from the previous night's debacle out on Crabber's Cove. You see Zolek, and he looks fantastic. He is. Uh, He's flush with color in his face. He looks probably 50 years younger than he looked when you saw him in the crypt. Uh, he's got a big smile on his face. And he's even kind of carousing with some of the, uh, some of the drunken townsfolk at, this, at, the, at, the, uh, at the fight pit. Um, he just looks really good. And he's just having the time of his life. Yeah, that's that's bad. Okay. Anyhow, um, and as as things are sort of progressing, it's time for the fists fight, and um, they drag the last uh, standard sword uh, battle loser off the field, and he's got you know he's got a giant gash across his arm, and he's bled out all over the field, and they kind of pull him off. <clears throat> and uh, Smitty, Smitty McCray, he, uh, he steps up and says, All right, folks, now it's time for the big bout. This is the one for the money, folks. This is the fist champion fight. And let's, let's give a hand to our uh, reigning champion, Clark. Come on out, Clark. And Clark comes out, and he's kind of he's bouncing up and down a little bit, and he's kind of flex. He's doing the uh, Dwayne Johnson pec flex. Um, yeah. You know, he's <laughs> kind of love, he's, baby. He's popping the, the pecs, and uh, and he's, he's he's ready. He's he just looks he looks super amped. Um, and then Smitty McRae is like, and challenging Clark is a uh, Erin Colbiter. And again, there's like this crowd. It's sort of a half and half. Some of the crowd is booing. Uh, and uh, the other half of the crowd is like really excited for what's about to happen. <clears throat> and you kind of, you walk out onto the field and you look over at Clark and Clark kind of looks at you and yeah, let's do this. All right. He cracks his knuckles. I kind of roll my shoulders. All right, let me bring up his stats here. <clears throat> Do the old, like, uh, little stretch, you know. Yep. Uh, roll of the neck. All right, so uh, let's do uh, let's do initiative. Initiative. Round one. Punch him in the balls. Ooh. Ooh, he just edges you out with the initiative. All right, so he is going to come at you with... Oh, sheesh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he's going he's gonna, to... He, um, he does a couple of flips as he nice. comes at you, and he is going to use acrobatics and this is my favorite part right here <laughs> he's going to use acrobatics and i'm going to use athletics <laughs> yep all right so he's got a um he's got a straight roll actually on this one all right Ooh, okay nice. 21. Oof -da. he's pretty acrobatic yeah 
It's Clark. What did you expect? So what? Uh, what? So he like he like does some flips towards me. Yep, he's flipping towards you, and then he comes at you with a with a punch. Like, like a Superman punch, like out of the flip. Pretty much. That's cool. Yep. <laughs> Um, Come on, hear it. Yeah, so I will. Um, I think I'm going to um, kind of uh, uh, like give it a breath, you know, like wait and really try to kind of strike at the right moment, like as he's coming at me. And just try to punch him out of the air. Okay. In the dick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> With a key point. All right. So you get an extra D4. Yeah. And this will be athletics because it's better than my acrobatics. So here's. Oof. Ah. <laughs> Here it goes. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> uh -oh. oh no. Here's my D4. <clears throat> yeah. We'll make it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So he comes at you, and you you try to punch him out of the air, and you kind of graze him as he comes at you, but he just comes down on you with the Superman punch. Yeah. And clocks you really hard in the face, right on the bridge of the nose. And I need you to do a Constitution save, uh, DC ten, to uh, maintain your consciousness. Cause come he, on. Because he got gotcha. you. Come on. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Wow. He just uh, he just cracks you so hard and you kind of stagger backwards. And yeah. then the rest of you watch as Eren just falls backwards. And oh. he kind of does that like um he's standing straight up and just tips back and just boom lands hard on his head on the ground. And everybody's just like, oh. And Clark just kind of stops and he kind of his motion stops and he kind of looks down at you. And uh he sees that you're not moving, and then he's like, get the clerics over here. And uh, they come over, and they, 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 they stabilize you, you know, and they check you over. But, yeah, you, you lost yeah. the bout. Oof. All right. Ouch. Wow. I, uh... My gold! <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, I'm glad I gave that to you and didn't loan it to you. I, uh... Once I'm up, I will um, approach Clark and kind of, you know, nod, like, you know, the Jeremiah Johnson nod, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and I say, uh, mm. that was good. I didn't uh, expect that. It was a lucky, it was a lucky strike. It was the only, only opening I could find on you. You've got some good technique. Maybe we can go again sometime. Maybe. I'd like that. Well done. And he gives you that, that classic forearm handshake. Yeah. Yep. The bro. The bro shake. Nice. All right. So now at this point, it's getting late in the night. First round. It's, you know, <laughs> oh, it's, man. It's been a couple so hours sorry, now. Dude. It's probably like two, let's say it's two in the morning and the, there's one fight left. And now, folks, it's time for the champion steals fight. Oh, God. You know where we are. Our, bring, let's bring out our champion, our returning champion, Dox. And he kind of comes out, you know, he's kind of somber. He's not super fired up. He's just sort of walks out and he's, he's kind of... Hold, he's, he's holding his maul in two hands as he walks out and he just looks like he's ready. And then they say, and uh, challenging docs tonight is local celebrity, Runar Dag. <laughs> local celebrity. And people just go ballistic. They obviously, there's obviously a favor, favored, they're favoring uh, Runar. And so you can only guess that a lot of the bets have been on Runar winning this fight. Runar, you, kinda, you, can, you just kind of feel pr a little pressure, a little extra pressure. Yeah. Um, no. As you step out on the field, and uh, Docs looks at you and and he says something that you don't understand. 
in some different language and kind of nods and gives you a little bit of a bow. You can tell he's, he seems like an honorable fighter, um, but he kind of gives you the look. And um, we'll roll for initiative. All right. Just a regular initiative roll? Yep. Ooh, you yeah. edged him out. You <laughs> edged him out. Nicely done. Out of, out of curiosity, what language was it? Um, what languages do you speak? I speak under common, common, and thieves. Nope. You wouldn't understand what he said. All I got is common, elvish, and dwarvish. Nope. Yeah, I only know dwarvish. Nope. Nope. Something, something different. Um, all right. So, uh, Runar, you have the initiative... What are you going to use, acrobatics or athletics? Uh, I'll be using acrobatics. Okay. I believe. All right. Yeah, acrobatics. All right, you're going to use acrobatics. And then do you have anything that you're going to add to it um, um, in terms of your adding a D4? I'll use the action surge. Oh, you're going to use it right off the bat. Got it. All right. <laughs> what do you think? <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right. All right, okay. so go ahead and roll a d20. Uh, what'd you say, athletics and a d4? Acrobatics. Oh, okay, acrobatics. acrobatics. Oh, wow. Yeah. Crit. Woo! Wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. wow. Dude, oh, oh, my God. God. I just critted that guy. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you still want me to roll a d4? Yeah. Yeah, roll it anyways. All right. Oh my god. There we go. 29. Well, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> Dox does not get a chance to. Uh, did you attack with your scimitars? Yeah, dual scimitars. Yeah, you just I'm... come you come at him and you just swing the first one and it cuts right across his bare chest, opens him up. And then with the other one, you just drive it right through him, straight into him, and it comes out his back. And the people, they just can't. I mean, it's like pandemonium. <laughs> it is absolute pandemonium. And he, you kind of like have to push him off of your scimitar to remove it. You kind of have to like uh, and pull it out of him. And he just hits the ground and the clerics run in right away and start, you know, giving him some healing magic and trying to stabilize him. And, uh, and the people are just absolutely bonkers. People are falling down, rolling in the, in the mud, and just like, they're like high-fiving each other, and a bunch of people run out into the field, and they're like on top of you and like patting you, and they're, it's like just a, just a pile-up at the, like the, the World Series type of shit. Do I get carried on shoulders? Yeah, you get pushed Way up, up on, on top of people's shoulders, and they're like... They're like Dual scimitars in hand? Yep, you're just like, yes! And the rest of you are just like, what? <laughs> and this is totally just what the fuck just happened. Yep, this just, just goes a on. Lot of money. Yeah, it just goes on and on and on and it, it continues for, you know, a good twenty minutes and finally they, they set you down and and all of you settle up with uh, with Smitty McCray and um, when he uh, when you come up Runar to collect, he's like Wow, that was amazing. That was fantastic. Dox has been the champion for, for months. Uh, look, we'd love to have you back. Can we, can we count on you to come back and, and uh, defend your title? I'll think about it. I'll let you know. All right, all right. We'll, uh, we'll, make, it worth, <laughs> we'll make it worth your while. He says, check in with Kreb, uh, you know, maybe tomorrow, and, and uh, we'll get you set up with your next fight. That was fantastic. Best haul of the best haul we've had all month so what was what did what did i win for doing that all right so <laughs> uh theo you walk away with your 50 gold plus another 50 Woo. clark you or excuse me Aaron, you lost your 200 yeah byron you walk away with your 100 plus another 100 excellent Runar, you walk away with your 600 plus another 600. And then, and then, let's see. I bet 10 gold on everybody. Yep, so hold on a sec here. Oh, you lost 10 gold on me. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you <laughs> lost. Up you lost your money on. Uh, you made. You made ten on Theo. So you got your ten back plus another ten. You lost your ten on Clark. You made your ten back on Byron plus another ten. Wait. Okay. Wait. And okay, so. Byron, you yep. lost your gold piece because you bet up gold yep. on Erin. Yep. Yep. Now the yep. next thing is I got to roll for the standard fists. So Theo, you get ten percent of the pot. So. Oh. Do you like pot? Yeah. I mean the pot. So it's sixty-three. I'm got a factor of so times point one. So you got another thirty-two gold. I'll take it. Yep. Uh, Byron Steel Standard. Okay, so that is D one hundred. Thirty-five times factor. Um, and that was standard steals. You get winner takes twenty percent. So you got another hundred and five gold. Um, and then Runar, because you are in the champions steals. Um, man, this is some big money. You just own part of the town now. Congratulations. You're a marquee. <laughs> <laughs> um, Runar just got a lot more famous. <laughs> he was already so famous. Yeah, I know. He's now super famous. Uh, you Almost earned famous. another 176 gold on top of everything else. Nice. Holy crap, guys. That was impressive. I earned 796 gold on that. Nice. You can only imagine how much money that the um, Smitty McRae took back. Um, everybody seems, well, a lot of people lost their bets, but the people who won seem very happy. And, and Kreb, as you look over, Kreb is walking away, and he, he looks really happy. He and his crew did pretty well. Um, everybody roll a perception check for me. While we're rolling this perception check, um, Theo was mentioned. So I may have lined up to get some work for Kreb to learn more about what he's doing tomorrow, just so everyone knows. Did you say everybody roll perception? Yeah, if you want to. You don't have to. But if you're just sort of paying attention to the crowd. Um, Theo, nope. you, um, you look around and you also catch a glimpse of a familiar face in the crowd as it sort of fades into the, the darkness behind other people. And you feel for a moment that you saw like a really young version of that, that creepy Zolik guy that you guys, that bit you, the guy that bit you in the tour. So let me revise that statement Theo was making. So I kind of set myself up to get some work from Kreb so I can kind of get into his confidence and find, oh fuck. <laughs> Um, guys, we have a big fucking problem. I noticed, yeah, I saw him. Zolek is back. That means he never left. Um, uh, oh boy. I'll cross that bridge when we come to it, eh? Who is this Zolek that you speak of? I think, um, oh shit, where are you staying? Me? Yes. Uh, you know, I haven't actually gotten a room yet, um, here in Salt Marsh yet. Uh, so nowhere yet. You two have to go, right? Like he yeah, drops his voice. Yeah, we could. Well, either that or we 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 don't have a room right now, so we're looking to. We could either go to the goat or the snapping line. If they I'm have already, a room. I'm, I'm already set up a snapping line. Before, before we go anywhere, 
I do have uh, something I'd like to run by you. Should we maybe not talk about that here? This is the spot. You're right. Okay. Well, at this point, oh. at this point, most of the people have 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 left. Um, people are heading back to town at this point. Um, the only thing that you do notice is that um, there's a. Um, actually, you didn't notice because your perception was not was not high enough. So yeah, so everybody else is is sort of like they've walked away, and so you guys are kind of standing there, the four of you. Um, the torches have been put out. It's dark, and they're, it's not like you're, you've, you've been left there alone, but there's, it's, it's cleaned out pretty well. Clearing out. Yeah, it's clearing out pretty well. So oh, you, you, you feel as back. though you could have a conversation without okay. people hearing. All right, um, so I'll look at my guys. I'll be like, guys, I know in the morning we planned on meeting with Sophia mm -hmm. during the house, but I have this feeling that she might be involved. Like you said, the person who benefits most from Aubrick's death should be looked into, and I just don't trust her. I think we should go to the house tonight and break in. And I'm not saying you guys need to break in too, but... It might be a good idea to at least just go and see if there's anything, any comings and goings. Yes, and with okay. Runar, you are so. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not famous, <laughs> but like, what's the opposite of like, uh, sneaky? Obvious. Yeah, Obvious. you know what? Wherever you go, people I know. People know. Yeah. If you were to go in front of the building, um. And you were to, I don't know, distract the guards for a moment. Because I know they've heard of you. At this point, I think everyone's heard of you. Um, I could sneak in and I could find out more information. I think one, not a bad idea. Two, we should stay in pairs, especially with certain someone wandering around. So maybe you take your coal buyer with you because he's very sneaky. Uh, and I will be um, Runar Dank's roommate. At this point, I think I could probably pass myself off as a squire. Yeah, and at this point, Dave, can we see what Zolek is doing? No, he disappeared into the into the mists. Okay. Yeah, he's gone at this point from your view. So he's gone. Yeah. All right. As far as you know. Yeah, so, gentlemen. Yeah, let's go. It's I, late. It sounds like a good it's, plan. It's what, like one? It's two probably in the like morning? two. It's between two and three. Okay, so yeah, it's like the so, witching, uh, you know, past the witching hour. Yep, the world should be asleep. Uh, so let's go bust into the drowning estate. Are you good with this? Hmm. <laughs> you can say no. I mean, you're in. Yeah. Trust me when I say you got a better so read on it than I do. Trusted. Let's do it. All right. All right. Is We're she, doing this. Is she why you have crabs now? Oh. Ooh. Wait, he has crabs? Just checking. No, never mind. We're fine. Let's go. Take 10 steps away from here. No, you. I'm just saying, I got a certain vibe. I thought maybe they knew each other. Oh. Oh, okay. Never mind. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. How do you how do you drop a GIF in there? Into uh, into the Discord. Into Discord. Yep. At the bottom, uh, in the text enter bar oh, on yeah. the right hand side is a GIF picture. Oh. You just hit a GIF, and then you type in the search bar, search GIF search. So you're limited to what they have. Yeah, and you can drag, you can find stuff like from the web and drag it in there. That's what I want. I found an awesome GIF. Some like you might be able to like copy and paste, like I've done that. Um, or sometimes you can even just drag it into the text, the chat feed. Oh, 
Let's see if this works. This is what I kind of envisioned. Oh, it's not GIFing though. Oh no. It's not loading. Do you know the GIF I'm talking about? You can open original. Oh, it's not, yeah, for some reason it's not. You know the C3PO thing though, where they're yeah, like, yeah. All right, anyways. <laughs> All right, so the, the plan is to head to the Dralian Estate in the, in the dark of night and see what you can see. I love it. Let's take a uh, let's take a ten minute break. Um, right. See if I can give pull the DM a second to relax after all the curveballs we keep throwing him. Well, I got to come up with a Dralian estate, which I I kind of have. So, uh, <laughs> all right, give me ten minutes, and then we'll get back to it. You have it, my yeah. friend. Thank you. All right. Ah oh, man, I can't believe I got taken out first round. I know that. I can't either. That was, I did not see part. that happening. But to be fair, like, I mean, role. my, like, uh, I don't know, my roles are, my roles are weird, like, because yep. I'm, like, de wisdom is my best stat, mm -hmm. you know, so, like, my best skill is insight, um, athletics, I have a plus five in, and that's my second best skill. Which is funny because I have a better dex than strength by plus one. But I was really banking on at least getting into round two and getting know. getting two two D at least two D four. Ah, oh well. Well I only lost one gold on you. Yeah. <laughs> I lost ten makes you feel better. a lot of money. <laughs> I, I feel lost, like I'm pretty perceptive. I lost I 170 I gold on me. <laughs> oh. I have oh, 19 good. gold. Okay. I went into that with 100 and I left good with 105. Don't worry. Don't worry, or Runar's got your back. <laughs> no shit. Runar will cover for you. Uh, Runar, you might as well just buy a house. Well, I'm thinking, like, maybe we should get a boat, you know? Like, Ooh, uh, a ship? <laughs> We could go track down Corcoros and have I'm like not, a, a yeah. flotilla. Right. I'm not quite that rich yet, I don't think. Oh, I think please. We, we, could, we could get like a what robot you have? I got. You, have, you had, <laughs> so you went into that. I went so in with think. You had 700 seven, gold. I had like 17 something, like 1760. And then I won, what was it? You won oh, 796? Yeah, yeah, so I ended up with um, 20, 25, 25, um, 2564 gold. But yeah, a lot of that was from, I think I, went, I got like over a thousand gold for the, uh, that first season mission. Because so many. Yeah, we got. I mean, we got. I like. Yeah, so let me the, bring up. There was only like five remaining crew members to split like the whole pot between. So we ended up getting paid pretty well for that first mission. All right. So a gal. I got to step, step away gold. real quick. Sorry. Sorry, say that again. A galley is 30,000 gold? Yeah. A longship's only 10,000. As well as a sailing ship, but a warship's twenty five thousand. Yeah, we're a little we, ways away from there. Are, at we, this are, point. We gonna, are we gonna make a ship for Runar Dag? <laughs> Plus, we'd have to have crew. We'd need more people to sail it, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I we could get fine. a keel boat. That's only three thousand gold. I mean, it's I like think a sailboat, we're just right? Barely capable of affording a keel boat. I mean, like a, what is that like? A, Corcoros, like a... with Corcoros' share of the Dralian expedition, he probably bought a keel boat and got a crew. <laughs> That's three thousand gold. It's a yeah. sixty foot. Yeah. It's a sixty foot sailing ship. That's a big boat. Yeah. yeah three, like three, three, three crew, four oh. passengers. Yeah. My my character has the sailor background. Let me tell you, he'll help you run any ship you want. I have a shipwright background. Yeah. We're halfway 
can build yep. and or repair the boat. All right, I'll be right back. All right, word. If we really get some money, we could even buy some chariots to Why put on we... the boat, so that way we could jump our chariots off the boat onto Chad, the ground. We are not, Chad, we are not amphibiously assaulting with chariots <laughs> from a boat. I want you to understand that. I also wanted to say that out loud so everyone in the background heard that too. Challenge? Right. <laughs> I think that sounds like a great idea. This is why we, we can't run our things. chariot into their boat <laughs> and sink it. That's right. Yeah, we get ourselves a warship with a ram on it and then ram other ships and then drive our chariots onto the deck. And we have advantage because we're mounted. <laughs> That's right. And we put blades on the chariot wheels. Ooh, and kneecap <laughs> them. Oh, I'm into this. <laughs> oh my god. We need a I, wizard. I have Somebody who can cast like an ice spell so that if we do happen to not land on their boat, we're not drowning. This is the equivalent of us buying spell. This is the equivalent of us buying like a, a thirty foot yacht and just putting a bunch of ATVs on it and driving into other boats. And driving our ATVs onto their boats. See, what worries me is I feel like you know people that have done that. I know people who would do it. They just lack the resources. Okay. You don't know Jim, me that well. Jim has a boat and some four wheelers. He does. You're not wrong. Just don't bring this idea up to him because you know he'll at least half try it. There will be an experimental run. Yeah. I just I don't want to feel responsible for what I hear that you know. Well, he broke an ATV by flooding it and sinking it. Sounds like a good plan. The D and D Beyond character app or player app is up. I I have it on my phone actually. Yeah. I need to buy Xanathar's guide for it. For D and D Beyond. Yeah. yeah, I've only bought I bought a couple of the because you can just buy like subclass or race. I bought a couple of the subclasses. I haven't I haven't bought the book on D and D Beyond yet. Once next time I you know run across someone who's doing a oh you know buy it for you know give us a discount code I will probably uh, grab Xanathar's and yeah. toss it on there because it's a well, pretty I mean, good character generation. Critical rolls back, and while I haven't. <clears throat> What? What's that? They have no sponsors yet. Oh, really? Yeah, the, at least for the last couple of episodes, but since they're starting back up, I expect <clears throat> sponsors to start rolling back in shortly. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't watched it. Um, it's. Oh, right it's back. Or rather, or rather, I haven't listened to it. It's. I mean, it's it's still good, and um, yeah. apparently, sometime over the COVID break, um. Talison just somehow dialed up the entertaining on uh, uh, Caduceus to the point that like all of the takeaway jokes are all Caduceus jokes from the past two episodes. Oh. In, like in a good way. It's like oh, you know they discovered certain things like thaumaturgy lets you change the color of your eyes. That's all it says it does to any color you want every round. Mm -hmm. So you know if someone knows this way you can change the color of your eyes. Yeah, and then just proceeds to go through an entire spectrum of eyes in like 30 seconds. The whole part is like, what are you, oh God. <laughs> like that's, that's hilarious use of basic magic. I'm still, I'm, I'm trying to get caught up on the World Tree Burns, which sucks because it's a year behind. Which one's the World Tree Burns? So it's, it's the official Cobalt Press Midgard oh, on yeah. Encounter Roleplay, Ooh. Um, DM'd by Dan Dillon. I do not know Dan Dillon. So Dan Dillon wrote a shit ton of the stuff for Midgard and now works. He's, he, so I think what it was is Kate Welch got a new position within Wizards and oh. Dan took her got hired onto her position but either way nice. dan works at wizards now yeah. um and the world tree burns is it's cool because it's you know it's like the opposite like it's a it's a 
it's a uh, encounter role play game, so it's like the opposite of Critical Role. So it's all everybody's on, you know, Skype or whatever, or they, you know, it's they do it on Twitch, and half of the people live in England or Scotland, and some, you know, Dan lives in the states, and and so it's all online. Nobody's ever together, um, but they're like they've got some suit like e- like critical role equally not maybe not super actor types but like really good like role players like people have been playing D D for a while or or are just really good so it's it's super fun but it's a year behind because i listen to the podcast which is put out by the tome show and right now i'm listening to season two which even at this point is i think the le- episode i'm listening to right now dropped like almost a year ago um and but but it's from like 2000 i think it it was actually the audio or the live stream of it on and kind of role play actually happened like in 2018 maybe and I'm listening to it, and it, which and it came out like 2019, I think. What are you guys talking about? You? Yeah. I came out uh, in 2019. I mean, I, I assume that's when your model came online. You have a very <laughs> new uh, high tech model. Mm-hmm. No, we're talking about podcasts. Ah. It's a great form of entertainment. I I use podcasts all the time. Mm-hmm. I just listened to the Armchair Expert. I don't know if you guys ever listen to Dax Shepard's podcast. It's freaking great. Super no. fun to listen to when you're just you got you know you're doing some menial job or whatever. But he's really funny. He interviewed yeah. the Beastie Boys on the one that I just listened to, which was pretty cool. I I was nice. a big, big fan of the Beastie Boys or still am, um, but that was kind of cool. But the one apparently my wife said the one with where he interviews Melissa McCarthy is hilarious because they're like old buddies. And so they have mm-hmm. all these like old stories and old inside jokes and stuff. So I'm, I'm going to listen to that one tomorrow, but he's really good. That's a good one. And then I just downloaded the first episode of the, um, Jeffrey Epstein thing. Cause I want to figure out, I want to learn more about that creep. Oh geez. Yeah. yeah the, the, that's Netflix, the Netflix series. I haven't watched that yet. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to good. the, uh, I'm going to listen to the podcast first. Cause podcasts are usually more in more depth. Yeah. A little more in depth probably. Yep. <clears throat> so there's uh there's some videos with um uh what the fuck is his name brett weinstein um yeah. he was he's a like a professor yeah. and like a whatever he was on rogan and talked about the epstein thing and it is fucked. yeah didn't his didn't his brother meet him i think he met him like weinstein oh, yeah. met him like on this one on this interview i don't remember if it was the rogan interview or if it was a different interview because i watched a bunch of these things and he's convinced that jeffrey epstein as a construct isn't a real person like like the jeffrey epstein that we know of or that people would know of as jeffrey epstein is an act and he's like a front man like because he like he's a super rich guy but in a lot of there's a lot of like things that he doesn't really fit with the the type like he doesn't you know he's not like he's not like a aristocratic guy you know he's um and there's all these other things that he talks about that i can't remember a lot of but He's like, it was, Whoa. he got like, even when he went to, this guy went to his office to like drop something off at his business or something. And it was like Seriously. super weird. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's a fucked rabbit hole. Well, like <laughs> the, the whole theory I got from the series is that he was, he was rich by extorting people. You're not a dick. Mm-hmm. Yes, doing. absolutely. He, he yeah. spied on these people as he was, he was into he would set them up with sex yeah. and then he would videotape it and then he would mm-hmm. essentially blackmail them, I think is the story yeah. from what I understand. And he mm-hmm. got most of his money from that, oh, who was that guy? Um, the guy who owned um, uh, like Victoria's Secret. Brand. 
Yeah, Victoria's Secret. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. Oh, means. really? Yeah, he swindled yeah. him for like forty-five million dollars, and the guy didn't yeah. do a thing because he had so much. He had so much dirty, dirty shit on him. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's not for certain, but sure. they had this like weird close <clears throat> relationship that nobody knows about, and it it was most likely like. I'll manage your money or I'll expose you for, you know, sleeping with a teenage girl or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. Or like something even so more fucked. For all we know. He had like all these fancy estates around the world and they, and I guess, I haven't watched yeah. any of this stuff yet, but I guess all of the rooms had video surveillance and they were all yeah. recorded. Oh, and, I'm sure. Yeah. So anyways. But like the, the Netflix series delves into how he would, he was basically hiring high school girls to come massage him at his home in, in well his and that Gis, Gis Lane or whatever however you say that lady's name oh she was full on in she was the one that was sure. like getting it the getting girl all these, the yeah, girl yeah. that's on suicide watch right now <laughs> yeah, she, yeah she's gonna die the same prison that Weinstein killed himself while under suicide watch Epstein yeah Ep- absolutely oh, yeah. Epstein sorry what did I yep. say you said Weinstein, Weinstein. it's a He's common well, mistake they're all yeah. pigs they're all a bunch of fucking oh, yeah. Man. yeah yeah yeah. Anyway, she's wearing paper clothes in jail. They took away her clothes. They they're making her wear paper clothes, and they took away all of her sheets. Yeah, smart. She's still gonna she's still gonna die. Someone's gonna kill her. Yeah, for sure. Um, too, too much dirt. Yeah. So, anyways, real. that's yeah, the real world. That come out. That's all the real world. We're gonna we're gonna delve back yeah, let's into delve back into the good stuff. Yeah, the good stuff here. All right, so for the sake of of brevity here, we'll say that you've you've made your way uh, back across the bridge, uh, crossing over the the waters of the Kingfisher River, and you've made your way through town. And there's there's a fair amount of revelry and drunkenness that you notice even at this late hour. Um, but you make your way uh, up the road, and you're I don't know maybe. Five, six hundred feet from the the Drallian estate up ahead. All right, what's the plan? All right, um, so I understand Sophia probably has a number of guards guarding the estate. They've probably boosted security. This is just a theory. Don't quote me on any of this, but I have a feeling Sophia's raised security, so we're gonna want to distract them or knock them out. I don't want. I don't feel comfortable killing innocent people. They're just doing their jobs, but um, we need to get into the state undetected. So I and think she, was, she said she was raised security, so I think it's five on there. Oh, she did. Okay, I was. I, you know, I felt like I remembered that, but I couldn't remember entirely. Um, does somebody want to enter the estate with me? I was thinking we should send Aaron with you because he's sneaky, uh, and that's why I'm not. <clears throat> Aaron, are you sneaky? I haven't necessarily been known for that ability. I'm a blacksmith. I see. I'm trying to build you up here, Aaron. What are you doing? I'm trying to make you out. I, mean, um, I have a good head on my shoulders. Clearly, put you, you know, ahead of me. You know, I think at this point I will take off my cloak and I will hand it to Aaron and I will say, I want this back. But yeah, you can wear my you can wear my cloak with the hood up. Is it some kind of special cloak? Ah, uh, it was made by the Elven. It is a cloak of Elven kind. It will help you uh, stay hidden when others seek you. And I'll and and breaking the fourth wall, it basically gives you advantage on stealth checks and it gives others disadvantage on perception checks to detect you Mm -hmm. because i'm very stealthy already i think i'll be okay or if you think i can go in alone 
You three can guard the outside gate while I while I go in. Well, also to break the fourth wall, I would have to attune it. Uh, oh, which would take an hour. It takes a take an short rest. Yeah, we don't have an hour. Um, never mind. I don't give you my cloak, and I will just go in myself. And you three guard, and I will I will call you forward as I clear in front of us. I thought you were going to stay outside. If there's just you, you could sneak past the guards, yes? I believe so. Well, um, are we are we within uh, visual distance of like the front gate, Dave? Can we no, see? you're still a little ways down the road kind of making a plan. Okay. There's but you can no see you can to... see the estate up ahead. And those were like tower guards that were there, right? Unless um additional Yeah, from what like you, what you remember they were the, they were town guardsmen that had been posted. Yeah. I don't um, see any, any need to uh, 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 to mess with guards, which would key someone in that something has happened, even if it is later. Yeah, I think ideally we wouldn't want to knock them out even. That's like 3 a.m. Right, right now, right. too. Yeah. Um, Dave, where are we like right about here, would Let's you see. say? Um, hold on, I'm not looking at that map. Do it again. Um, yeah, you're, you're more, I would say you're more, let me jump over to that map. Um, you are more kind of down. Yeah, you're about right here. Okay. And do we see any guards and is there a fence separating the field from us? There is not a fence separating you from the field at this point. Uh, you, from where you're standing there, you can, well, roll a perception check. Yeah, you can see uh, there are torches lit in front of the estate. Uh, and you can see that there are a couple of guards right off the road here. Post There's two guards posted right here is what you can see. The rest of okay. the uh, estate, at least the lower floors, are obscured by this building right here um, because you're kind of back here. So you can't really see what's going on closer in in here or around the sides you can't and you definitely can't see what's going on on the other side of the building okay but you can and, see two uh, guards in front and the field over here is this <clears throat> tall grass is this tall crops is this short crops um it looks as though it has been recently planted so it's 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 the earth has been recently tilled and um there's maybe little sprouts in some places coming up through the grass or through the earth Okay. Um, I'm I'm gonna grab the guys and I'm gonna say, guys, let's move into the field over here, and and get a better view of the estate from a different angle. Sure. So yeah, we'll move. We'll move. Basically, um, this way. Okay. All right, everybody roll a stealth check uh, with advantage. The advantage part is because right now the, uh, the wind is howling. Uh, it's, it, there's a bit of rain that's starting to fall. Nice. Wow. Nice. Yeah, you guys feel, you guys feel pretty, pretty stealthy as you make your way up to this. Um, there's a hedge right here that you get behind. Okay, cool, cool. Yep, and at um, this point, you can see that there are two additional guards on the back side of the estate. There looks to be a double door that enters the estate. There's also a single side door over here that has two guards. So it looks like they've posted two guards at each of the three entrances that, you can t that you've seen so far. Um, and from this angle, I will make another perception check to see if there is a second floor window that I might be able to climb to or 
anything of that sort. Okay. Vines, etc. <clears throat> Nice. Yes, uh, you see that there are uh, a variety of windows on the second floor. In fact, you notice that there are uh, there are a couple that are open. There are six. There are six windows along the back side of the building. Let me jump back over here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, so I can. So if you guys zoom in a little bit on that building, there are six windows along this back side, and there are a couple that are open right here on the, on the sort of the far end, a couple of open windows. Yep, right there. And that is directly above the guards, is that correct? That is... Yes, directly above the guards. Okay. Um, okay. Um, at this point, Byron's gonna like go into like a a really intense like thinking mode, and he's going to and he's gonna like <laughs> he's gonna look really <laughs> serious. Yeah, that sounded better in my head. Toggle thinking um, mode. Toggle thinking mode. Um, uh, does anyone have a grappling hook? Uh, I might actually. Check. I do not. Nope. Yeah, I do have oh, a grappling wait. hook. You have a grappling hook. Can I borrow your grappling hook, sir? Certainly. Okay, so I'll take your grappling hook. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll look at... Uh, well, actually, we have a... Um, I'll look at, well, I actually don't know this. Um, does anyone have the ability to distract these guys with noise or a spell or some kind of image out in the field over here this way that would yeah. maybe perhaps draw them away? I can probably uh, at least make some noise. Um, all right, I want you to move out this way. And I need you to make noise um, on my signal. And you, you'll know my signal. <laughs> I am worried by the fact that you say you will know, I will know what you're saying. Uh, actually, yeah, you're right. No, maybe I don't have a good way of signaling you because um, it's dark out. Um, walk out here and then and count to 20 slowly. And when you get to 20, make loud noise or make a make a distraction of some kind so that the guards move away from the door um as he's doing that runar and Erin um grab some rocks or something is, is that outside the fence line over there dave yes okay oh is there a fence between us and the window there is a wrought iron fence that is pretty tight along the peri the perimeter of the house. So it's probably about 10 to 15 feet out from the house that goes around the entire perimeter. And it's, like, it's about six like feet that? tall. Yep. Perfect. Um, does that include uh, this area as well? Yes, it does. Okay. There, there's a gate. Here, let me jump back over to that map. There is... Let's see, draw, yay, it's drawing. Okay, so there is a perimeter fence that goes like this, like that. Wait, I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Oh, I, I see it, yep. Around the front, there's a gate. Wherever it's open, there's a gate. Okay, so a gate here, okay. here. Yep, so there's a gate here, and here, here okay. and here that you can that you know about. All right. Um, are the gates guarded? Nope. Okay. Uh, just the entrance over here. Yep. Two more here and two more here. Yep. Let's see. There are. Boop, boop, 
Boop. Would you go so far as to say boop, beep boop? Boop, beep boop. Okay, cool, cool. Um, <laughs> so yeah, make noise out here. Um, in twenty seconds after we we break, okay. Uh, move out as far as you can, and then twenty seconds later, make as much noise as you can. Runar and Iren, I want you to to post up by the gate entrance, in case they move that direction. If they do. And you feel comfortable. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about knocking out guards. I mean, why? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we should do that. Okay, yeah, you're right. I mean, okay. we, if we don't need to engage the guards, the more is the better. But even if they come okay. out towards that gate, like, if you're going over the fence somewhere else... You're right, it's, you're right. It's pretty heavily guarded. I think we want to... Like, we're going to go back there tomorrow morning and act like nothing happened. Like, we definitely... We most likely don't want them to see us. Otherwise, we'll have to explain to Eliander. What, you're right, why, you're right. And knocking out his guards is not going to look good. You're absolutely right. So, um... Well... You guys just chill. Um, I'll climb the fence here and Maybe use the grappling hook to get up to the second floor window. Um, when I need to escape the building, I will light a torch and drop it down from the window. And when you see the torch drop, I need somebody to make noise at the gate to pull the guards away so that I can climb the fence and escape. All right. Uh, does everyone understand? Uh, I mean, yes. All right. Um, so let's get into position. Um, me and Theo will move together this way for now. Uh, from when me and Theo break, that will be the, again the 20-second counter. I will move to the fence, climb the fence, and enter the estate from the second floor. I will do my reconnaissance and... Uh, when you see me light a torch on the second floor window from where I enter, um, Runar and Iren, I need you to make as much noise at the gate, at which point I will escape from the same window, climb the fence, and uh, uh, rendezvous with, uh, with Theo. All right. Let's do this. All right. So... Theo and uh, and Byron, just put a little uh, Byron, put a little dot where the two of you are going to try to make it to before you split. Okay, so right below the S there. Yep. Right there. Okay. And where are we? Yeah, where are you guys going to post up? I assumed like we were like for now, just for now. Right by the gate. Here. Can they see this window from there? Let's do this. Can I, I'm going to actually drop your tokens on here. Why don't we do that? Oh, no. Oh, I love it. Well, that's pretty big, though. I mean, I guess I can. <laughs> oh, I accidentally deleted it immediately, too. Wow, that's so big. <laughs> you can <laughs> resize Every it. time I heard that. There we go. Yeah, I bet. All right. Oh, God, Theo's moving on his own. What's happening? He's possessed. All right, so... Iren and Runar, place yourselves where you want to be. I can't select my token. You can't? No. Why not? Sure. Uh... Can everybody else select theirs? Yeah, I can oh, you have you have grid turned on on this, don't you? Probably. Uh, Hiding in the background. Hold on, let me turn it off. Yeah, because I can't. I can only move to certain places. I actually exited the game somehow. Hold on. I did that earlier on accident too. All right, grid, grid is turned off. Nice. There we go. All right. So, so what? 
what was this field again like again? Uh, it recently planted. So not tall. <clears throat> Correct. Okay. No cover. I think a there. lot of dirt with a tiny sprout no. coming out of it. What's the uh, what the hell? Hold on a second, Erin or uh, Runar. Let me fix this for you because this happened once before. where it just assigns a generic token. There you go. Now you should be able to grab it. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> okay. So I, I guess I was kind of imagining us in these like woodsy Is this like a hedgerow trees. here? Trees, yeah. Like what's Is this? On it? Dave, what's this environment like behind the house right here? Like where short grass, some shrub, some like small shrubs, maybe waist height, but mostly like grassy fields. Kind of yeah, where you like, you might expect like cattle to be grazing that sort of thing. Crouch okay. down in the shrubbery. Yeah, this right here. Or, is a, and or this is a hedgerow right here. Okay. Yeah. And or what's um. <clears throat> Uh, we've probably already covered this and I missed it, but is there <laughs> is there like guard or watch patrol around these um, outbuildings? Um, not that you've seen. Okay, because otherwise we could say post up like here, and maybe maybe you're there, Runar, and I'm back here by this outbuilding. Yeah, and that way we're at two different angles. Is this building like a barn or something? Yeah. Okay. It's like a shed. There's probably uh, some farming implements in there. This bigger building probably has the draft horses in it that that yeah, I was you say, know any drag livestock. the plows. Yep. Ooh, we could steal some horses. No, we shouldn't do that. Cool. Um, Derby from, horses could make. From noise. where you guys are at, can you see this second floor window? Second story window. Uh, Erin would have trouble seeing it, but Runar would be able to see it from there. Okay, okay. And then, so Runar. All right, so Runar and Irin are in position. Theo and Byron, are you in position where you've, before you split up? I want you guys to roll a uh, stealth check, please. See what we get. We get okay. Nice. All right, let me just. And I will have my check. hood up for all of this for the record. Yep, so roll with advantage then. Let me just do a quick, I want to double check what the passive perception is for these guys. Good lord. Oh, yeah. Not screwed around, Brian, are you? <laughs> Plus 10 to <clears throat> stealth. Nice. Byron? I just used I mean, the joke from earlier, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, all right. He is so, a rogue. Yep. Um, all right, so uh, at this point, Byron and Theo, you don't get the sense that the that the guards have seen you. In fact, you hear them talking a little bit. You can hear their voices. Um, you can't really make out what they're talking about, but you can hear hear their voices. Okay, okay. And I just want to just double check real quick. Runar, you know to make noise at the gate when you see a torch on the second floor? Yeah. Perfect. That's all that matters. And so I will... I will look at Theo and I'll say, all right, wish me luck. Don't die. 20 seconds from now. That's when we need we, we need to go, okay? I can count that high, don't worry. Oh, very good. Um, so I'm going to start moving towards the gate, or moving towards the fence over here. Okay. Theo Whoa. will, shockingly, as he does that, move back towards the head crowd. Okay. Both you guys roll another stealth check for me. Oops. Nice. Okay, so uh, Byron, you're able to get, uh, you're probably within, I would say, 10 feet of the guards, and you're, you're hidden behind a small shrub that's on the outside of the fence line still. Theo, as you make your way, you, uh, you step weird on a rock, like a, a fist-sized rock, and you kind of slip on it, and you fall to the ground, and kind of catch yourself, but you just kind of stop and and you're s still. 
and roll perception checks. <laughs> oh no. Uh, you, neither of you are sh uh, sure. Byron, you don't even know what happened, but Theo, you're you're not sure if they heard you or not. Well, seeing as he's fallen over, and he's going to assume by definition he blew that a little bit. Um, oh yeah. He just starts cursing loud, like loudly, and angrily pushing himself up, uh, and just kind of he is making all of the noise you would expect of I don't know a drunk asshole behind a house that just kind of fell over. All right. So at that point, Byron, you hear, Hey, hey, you there. Hey, hey you there. And then the two guards uh, are talking to each other, and one of them says, Well, this is what they pay us for. Go check it out. And the other guard's like, Rochambeau. And, you, and Byron, you can see them. They do a rock, paper, scissors. And the other one of them's like, God damn it. <laughs> and so he uh, he starts to make his way. Uh, oh man, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, I need a better I bet need a better token. Hold on a sec. Um, what do I have here? One sec. Bear with me. Whoa. Copy. It's hard on this scale. Uh, paste. <laughs> oh my god. They're giants. Oh great. Oh Giant dark again. Alright, so this guy is gonna stay here. This guy starts to make his way this way. And Runar, roll a stealth check for me to see how well you're hidden. Oof. All right. <laughs> he walks past you, and he's making his way out. Um, Byron, as he, you see him making his way out, this other guard is sort of like looking out into the dark, trying to see if he can see anything. And this guard is out here now searching for uh, the noise. Theo's gonna make it real easy for this guard to find the noise, because as the guard has gotten close, Theo has turned most of his back to where the guard is coming from, um, definitely has dropped trowel, and is just kind of urinating on the grass. <laughs> Hey, Swing what's what's the meaning of this? Well, he's hey, doing what's that. What's the meaning of this? It's 3 a.m. in doing? the morning. What you doing skulking around in the back here? This is well, pri private property. I know. It's Winston's store, and I'm pissing on it. Ah, uh, you're mistaken, my friend. This is not Winston's store. Winston's store is up the road. Now, be gone before I throw you in jail. You're going to throw me in jail for pissing in the grass? You're trespassing. Well, where's the line so I know where to piss not on? And literally, Theo's going to try and draw this out as long and as loud as he can. All right, so while that's happening, Byron? Um, at the same time that he's doing that, um, I am going to throw one of my steel pythons this way. Okay. Towards the gate. Okay. And I'm gonna try and aim for the fence so that uh, that he hears it hit. Okay. Roll a uh, a dexterity. Roll a dexterity. D twenty dexterity bonus. Oh yeah, yeah. You have pretty good aim with this shot. Uh, if it. You toss the stone and it hit, or the python, and it hits the the, the fence and makes a ruckus. And the uh, the other guard is like, "God damn it! What the fuck is going on here?" Uh, and he starts walking this way, and he's like, "Tyrell, what you got out there?" 
He's like, there's some bastard pissing out here. As soon as he starts yelling, I'm going to start climbing the fence a little bit further towards the corner. All right. You're, uh, you're able to get over the fence, no problem. And then I'll throw the grappling hook to the second floor. Okay. Roll, uh, roll another dexterity. D20 dexterity bonus. Nice. Nice. So <laughs> you, what are you aiming for? Uh, basically just the the window that's open. The win the open window. So that I can Oh you're trying to toss it through up. the window? Yeah, basically. Yeah, you you definitely do that. Your aim is solid. And you toss and it through it. the window. And you hook it and, and you then, pull on it and it's it seems solid. And I'll climb it as quick as I can. Mm. All right. Uh, easy enough. You're able to uh, scurry up the rope and duck into the window. All right. Um, at this point, I will pull the rope up behind me. Okay. Uh, so they don't see it. Okay. But I'll leave the grappling hook where it's at so that I can quick um, uh, get back out the window if I need to. Okay. And then I'll make a perception check in the room that I'm in. All right, you duck into the room. Perfect. Um, but other than that, let's let's pause here for tonight's session, and then we'll we'll pick it up um, next week. Sounds like a plan. Nice job, um, guys. That went, yeah. that went well. Guys, awesome, awesome sauce with the uh, the pit fight. Yeah, that went really well. <laughs> I'm glad we did that. You know, I was hesitant um when we first went into it but well it ended well. well ended well for me not so well for Erin. But... yeah sorry about that Erin. you kind of <laughs> well got your clock no. cleaned that's how Can't it goes mall, i guess <clears throat> yeah it was it was bad luck that's all yeah cool I like yeah, that was fun jesus a lot of knockouts <laughs> i can't believe runar that Freaking natural twenty. That natural you have, twenty was so good. You yeah, have solidified your legendary status in this town. Oh, shit. Docs who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was the champion, and you put him out in one minute. Yeah. Yeah, you Amazing. you ran him through. Start. Yeah. That was pretty cool. It's the fancy boots, man. That was fun. That was a lot more yeah. fun than I anticipated. I mean, I knew it was going to be fun, but. Yeah. That was even more fun than I thought. I can't wait to listen to it again. Yeah, <laughs> you guys, this has been a really fun uh, group to play with. You guys are great. Yeah. The role play is good, yeah, and the it's just yeah, it's very. I look forward to it every week. Good, oh yeah, good. me too. I really do too. Yeah, it's fun. I live for this. Yeah. It's for good sure. stuff. I'm glad we're playing weekly too. That helps move things along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. even if you, occasionally, yeah, even if we miss like a week, like you're only coming back a half week instead of like if you're every other week. Yeah, exactly. Then it's like a if month. my every other weekend we miss a week. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. You gotta figure yeah, out where you're at. And... Playing. Yeah. That is one of the yeah. benefits of recording the sessions, though. Is like, yeah. you can always yeah. go back and get you know remember what happened. Which I, yeah, really I like. try to watch this session before, before every session. Yeah. Um, or at least part of it, or I will, will fast forward through it. Yep. Because yep. it just gives me inspiration. Because right? I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, I totally forgot about that character saying that thing. And that's going to push me to do this thing, mm -hmm. this session. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I had so. to go back and refresh my memory about the. Well, and you know, like for your for your notes, your mission. when you guys like, if you guys take notes and stuff, like I do, you can actually, you can pull a link from that YouTube video for a specific time stamp. Uh, so if you're right. like, oh, if I ever want to go back and and relive the the time that Runar won the champion battle, you can <laughs> you can actually right click on the YouTube window and mm -hmm. you can pull the timestamp link and you can put it in like a you know a google doc or whatever you want wherever you keep your notes and you can always go back to that exact point which i really like huh. yeah so oh, you can that's badass yeah. i did not know that so you can like tag different parts of the video where you can just jump back like i want to remember this zolik guy 
like what he tried to tell us or whatever it might be. So right. <sighs> Alex back too. Yeah, that motherfucker. he was looking real good too. Yeah, like he's I was been he he's been feeding. <laughs> we all. Sure. He was having he a just, good time at the fights. All that blood. Fed, yeah. I'm all, surprised he didn't come in and feed. All that human emotion. We well, he's he's he had is. plenty of plenty of uh, opportunities. Yeah, he, he's been <clears throat> dining out in the boondocks. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. For all we know, there's a lot of missing people now. <laughs> yeah, you guys are having some serious impacts on this small town. Yeah, we're <laughs> fucking it up real good. But yeah. everybody thinks what you guys are like about? the best. Yeah. <laughs> everybody thinks Runar is like the guy who's going to yeah. like save the world. I mean, Literally. hypothetically speaking, we haven't written his story yet. So right. there's We've always the potential so. yep. that yeah. he's their hero. Yeah, but I, I mean, at this point, it kind of looks like he's going to be their downfall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From our perspective, well, and and heard his whole story. You know, to be honest, Byron's kind of a little bit of a cheap shot attack on Bear. That that could yeah. have that could have some implications later as well. Well, uh, from I mean, and this is Byron's perspective, I suppose. Uh, he's used to fighting to the death where there is no cleric waiting. And he is used to, uh, like, it, it, not choosing to fight, but, like, if you're going to fight, win, because the only other option is you just get put in the furnace with everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was... <clears throat> Bear is, like, the nicest no guy, though. <laughs> he is, like, the nicest gladiator Goliath. And you just fucking cheap shot at him. Well, yeah. yeah. In an un unsanctioned, no rules fight. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and I mean, how, else, how else would a rogue fight? Right. Yeah, and I shook his hand. I mean, he's lucky I shook his hand. Yeah, begrudgingly. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, I never would have shook anyone's hand in the fighting pits that I'm in. I'm used to. Right. Because well, that guy wasn't going to remember me. He was going to be dead. Salt Marsh was is a dead. weird place. <laughs> That's great. So much to work with after that episode. So much. <laughs> you guys just keep like giving me so many little seeds to plant. Every time. It's great. Uh, it gets confusing though after a while. Oh, I've got like, so yeah. many pages of notes. What are we doing? I have what? reams and reams of notes in my three We're binder. still investigating <laughs> Aubrick's death. We're investigating Aubrick's death. That is what we're doing. <laughs> we got to stick this There's up. a lot of other things we could do, but we're investigating <laughs> Aubrick's death. And we're going to see it through to the or end. Or you will forget Byron because he is investigating Aubrick's death. <laughs> wow. Well, guys, nice job. Uh, I loved it. That was a great session. Well done. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, uh, Kirk, you and I before will. Then. Yep, you and I will connect before that happens, and um, and figure out a time to role play the infiltration piece. Perfect. All right, guys. All right. Have a Take great care. night. We'll uh, we'll yeah. see you next week. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.